Imagine you're a sitting president. You pick your successor. You weaponize the FBI, DOJ, and the IRS against your challenger. You control 90% of the media with twice the ad budget. And this is some funny Rod Serling shit, I kid you not. You collude with foreign powers against the challenger only to lose against a reality television star that you claim is beneath you. <laughs> oh my god, man, that's some Do you hate scumbag politicians? Do you hate scum lords? And do you hate googly eyed fuckers like Adam Full of Schiff, Elizabeth Shitting Bulwark, Eli Spamflex Cummings, Maisie Sabja Corona, Jerry Rat Shit Brown, Jed the Fake Flake, Barack Lecoq Satoro, Joe Who Biden, or in general, any jackass that believes in Andrew Jackson. If you do, then guess what? You came to the right place! <laughs> You're a fucking <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of Spot the Liberal. We're on season six now! Six, six, six. Because it's the number of the beast. God, do I hate that number. Anyway, I got some breaking news for you. Now, I got 40 bits of news that, well, it's not breaking news because you've already known it. Breaking news. The Chinese had access to Hillary's illegal servers for two years between 2010 and 2012. China killed or imprisoned 20 Central Ignorance Agency sources during that time. So she allowed the Chinese to kill 20 members of the CIA on her watch! She is a mass murderer, people! Breaking news! CNN is full of complete nonsensical Nazism. Breaking news! The Columbia Broadcasting System, by the way, CNN is really the cable news network, but we really know it to be complete nonsensical Nazism. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, is full of complete bullshit. Jeff Flake is a fake. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, he's a faker. That's why he's not in Congress anymore, thank God. Breaking news! Your beloved so-called president, Barack Hussein Obama, is a terrorist! Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Your beloved so-called hope and change potters, potty mouth of the United States, is a terrorist. His real name is Barry Satoro, by the way. That's who I'm referring to, Barry Satoro, because Barack Obama is sure as hell not his real name. See, let me let me go in, let me let me in person. All right, I'll negotiate with uh, terrorists. I'll just give them whatever they want. If you want your terrorist plan, you can keep your terrorist plan. Period. If you want your health care plan, you can keep. Oh, okay, that's enough. I'm I'm done making fun of them. Elijah Cummings, breaking news, just told the world that the Democrats were responsible for giving blacks the rights to vote. Um, Mr. Cummings, 15th Amendment, black suffrage, every single Republican voted for it. Not one Democrat did. You got your story back, Ashford, son. 
Woo! Spygate! You thought I was done making fun of Obama, didn't you? Guess not. Never has a president left office to collude with his own party and other nations to impede the forthcoming president, meaning our current one, Donald Trump, who, by the way, is the greatest president in the history of our nation. Breaking news! He's still your president. You don't have to like him, but don't bitch about it. Hey, everyone! If she's invited to the White House, she won't go! Sir, no one cares. Keanu Reeves recently admitted, you know, the guy who starred in The Matrix and Speed and John Wick's three movies, John Wick Chapter 1, Chapter 2, and Chapter 3, he says, I've always felt like I'm not of this generation, I just live in it. Because the way my mindset differs from the majority you'd think I'd come from a different dimension. That's why I keep a lot of things to myself because many people won't understand me. Yes, this guy is a Republican. Keanu Reeves, ladies and gentlemen, is a Republican and he knows exactly what he's talking about and everything he says just about makes perfect sense. You don't have to agree with him but as I mentioned, with Donald Trump being your president, don't bitch about it. Oh, what else is new? Oh, every single, every single newspaper is trying to kill the truth! Ah! What else is new? Seriously, what else is new? Breaking news! Democrats have always been Nazis and socialists and terrorists and criminals! Yes, your beloved Democrat... You wonder why there's a walk-away party going on. A walk-away campaign, I should say. The walk-away campaign is gaining so much traction because people are finally starting to see, after nearly 210 years, that the Democratic Party, since 1812 or 1814, I don't remember which... I know it's one of those two dates, but for almost 210 years, the Democratic Party have always been full of shit. They promise things, and they deliver the opposite. They say one thing, they do another completely. They do this, but they won't do that. They're hypocrites, people! You know, ancient philosophers are the greatest minds in human history. They knew a lot more 5,000, 6,000 years ago, even as far back as 1,500 years ago, than we do now. And that's despite the fact that we have all this technology at our disposal, all these things that we can research by using the Google platform, Seneca said that all cruelty springs from weakness. And you know what? It's true. That's why the Democrats are so gosh darn cruel. Breaking news! When the texts are released, you've got to keep in mind the code name for Bill and Hillary Clinton and that piece of crap scumbag you call a president, Barack Obama were codenamed Eagle, Evergreen, and Renegade, respectively. Breaking news! 
The walk away campaign gains momentum as more Democrats walk away from the left. Breaking news. Trump is still the good guy. Breaking news. When corrupt politicians start going to jail and or are executed for their treasonous crimes against humanity, we can start trusting the government again. Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. When your best response to free speech is violence, you're an idiot! As Judge Judy would say. Oh, by the way, Joe Biden, you know, the famous number two to the ultimate piece of crap that's ever been in American history? Joe Biden. Joe the plumber! Because we need a plumber to fix this man, and Joe Biden ain't it! In 1990, he introduced the 1990 Gun Free Schools Act, which was about the worst thing to ever happen to this country in about 30 years. Ever since then, and you're never going to believe me when I tell you this, 92% of large mass shootings, 92%, have happened in gun-free zones. So it has been very clear from the beginning that the answer is not gun control! It is not gun control, people. It's taking the guns out of the wrong hands, meaning the politicians, the government. They want to take away your guns. Don't let it happen! Because if you give them your guns, you're going to end up like Venezuela. Because the government's going to kill you, your family, your dogs, your cats, and everyone else, and everything else around you too. Don't let it happen! Now, this is what they don't tell you. You remember how I said that CBS is full of complete bullshit? I meant it. They reported that Three Palestinians were killed as the daily violence grinds on. Not one time did they mention this Israeli hero who was killed while stopping a large-scale attack. Not one time did they mention that. Oh, by the way, you know our Constitution, right? The one that Thomas Jefferson and... Benjamin Franklin and John Hancock and George Washington and Patrick Henry signed on many, many decades ago. The Constitution was written because of people like the following. Maisie Hirona, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Joe Biden, Barack Obama, Jimmy Kimmel, Andrew Cuomo, Bill de Blasio, any Democrat in general in this country, every single Democrat in this country, is the reason why we have a Constitution. Not because they made it, but because they are everything that it doesn't represent. So, you remember the Benghazi attacks? How do I put this? Eight years ago this month, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama were responsible for the killing of four soldiers who were sent to Benghazi. This woman, the mother of Sean Smith, named Patricia, she said famously, The last time I talked to Sean, he told me, Mom, I'm going to die. All security had been pulled from the embassy. When he asked me why, he never received the response. The very next day he was murdered. I blame Hillary Clinton personally for the death of my son. That is her words. She said that. And it's also the truth! You can't accept truth? Then you don't deserve to be in this country, ladies and gentlemen. TRUTH! 
Imagine you're a Democrat, 25 years experience in your job. A new guy comes in, a Republican, with no experience, immediately beginning to run circles around you. You had your boss convinced for 25 years that you had legitimate reasons and excuses for your not getting anything done. And the new guy, he does it anyway. Imagine your resentment, fear, and bitterness over potential loss of job and power. Now you know why Washington, D.C. is the shithole of the United States. Now you know why the media, as Donald Trump said, is a joke! The media is a joke. I have a question for you. Actually, two. Do you want to see the tax returns of a billionaire that became president? Or would you rather want to see the tax return of career politicians who became millionaires and billionaires seemingly overnight? Personally, I would rather see the latter. Don't you? So, I have some advice for you, alright? Every time a Muslim stands up in Congress and tells us they're going to change our Constitution, impeach our president, or vote for socialism, remember, you swore and promised that you would never forget. They swore. They would destroy this country from within, and they have absolutely succeeded in that so far. We need to stop this! You understand? And now it's time for a good old segment. Scully Sanderson, take it away! Now for a pathetic faggot, 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 faggot of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our fag of the week. Cory Booker is a Democrat. Well, actually, he's not a Democrat, he's a socialist. Cory Anthony Booker is gay ladies and gentlemen there are rumors going around that he raped a bunch of boys so basically he's the black Jerry Sandusky don't know why that is don't care all I know is that Cory Booker is in bed with Rothschild that's how you know ladies and gentlemen that's how you know and I'll tell you why. What it all comes down to is Corey Anthony Booker also raped a 15 year old in 1992. Let that one sink in. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's our fag of the week. I got something else for you. Breaking news. Pete Buttigieg fights to light down independent Iowa LGBTQ vote. That's one day ago. The third Democratic debate. Right. So you mean to tell me that a man named Pete Buttigieg, who's the butt of every joke in Democratic history... It's going to make a decent candidate for president? I don't think so. Trump's going to get reelected next year. I guarantee it. I just know it. And by the way, with a name like Pete Buttigieg, anyone that has that name probably is the butt of every joke. 
Not intentionally, but... You know, Mr. Pete Buttigieg, Mr. Mayor, sir... I feel so sorry for your parents. I really do. Why do you have a name like Buttigieg, anyway? Oh, well, you just talk crap out of your mouth and... And talk out of your butt, don't you? I don't know. Just thought I'd throw that one out there. Ho oh, ho! Here's another reason to walk away from the Democratic Party. Impeachment inquiries! Ladies and gentlemen, this is what our country has come to. False accusations over something that never happened, potentially leading to the impeachment of probably the greatest president we have ever had as a nation. Alright. Whistleblower ass kisser is what it should say. Alleges White House cover up which by the way never happened so that whistleblower is just a democratic fascist ass kisser live updates Trump calls for Adam Schiff's resignation as Pelosi says virus got too far ah! <laughs> Nancy Pelosi is such a jackass, people. Tell you what. If we're going to survive as a nation any longer, what we're going to have to do, first of all, we're going to have to grab a set of balls, we're going to have to get out there and vote straight Republican and vote every single Democrat out of office. And lastly, we have to go out there and wake up! Do you understand, people? Do you get it? Because I'm telling you, I swear on my life, America is dead. I've been saying it for months and months and months. America is dead. There is no America anymore. It's more like idiocracy or moronica for morons, as the Three Stooges once called it. Because that literally is what America has come down to. It's, it's basically a country run by morons that think that we're fucking retarded despite the fact that they're the ones that are calling the kettle black. Like the pots that they are. I don't know, man. I don't know. It just figures itself out one way or the other, whether we want it to or not. You know, I'd love to think what Thomas Jefferson did by creating what is now the Democratic Party as a Democratic Republic, I'd love to believe that what he did was not a mistake, but Unfortunately, I wouldn't do that explanation any justice because, sadly, it was a mistake! I'm telling you, people, there is absolutely, without any doubt in my mind, collusion between the Democratic Party and Germany and the World Health Organization run by a former Nazi in George Soros and his son Alexander and Russia and the Saudis and Iran and Iraq and the entire Middle East and Mexico and all of South America I cannot even tell you how many countries the Democratic Party are colluding with right now and that's not including Venezuela. That's not including North Korea. And North Korea already knows that the Democratic Party is full of shit. That's why so many people are walking away from them. And you need to walk away from them too. People, I'm telling you, I'm dead serious. 
you not only need to walk away from the Democratic Party, you need to run the hell away as fast as you freaking can. Because ladies and gentlemen, the Democratic Party is going to die a slow, painful death in 2020 when Trump gets reelected. You know, how can a man who was elected by the people of the United States, I'm one of them, by the way, who elected him, how can a man who was elected by myself and about 63 million other Americans be under so much constant scrutiny from the previous administration who by the way deserves all the scrutiny that Trump is incorrectly being given because it all goes back to the top Obama Hillary Adam Schiff the FBI the DOJ the CIA the World Health Organization the who the who the World Health Organization. Not to be confused with a band called The Who. But ladies and gentlemen, this is as bad as it gets. When a nation has fallen so far down that rabbit hole to where we don't even know what the hell to do with our money half the time and we can't even educate ourselves because of this stupid dumbass public education system that's never meant a goddamn fucking thing you know what the hell's the point in there being a public education system the public education system's been around for a hundred years and it's failed miserably for a hundred years why not go back to where it was before and let the communities teach their children? You know? I don't understand why that's so hard to grasp. I mean, it's just... You know? See, back in the day, back before this guy named Charles Acock, or Icock, whatever the hell his last name was, whatever the hell his name was in general, before he introduced the public education system, some of the greatest minds in history were being produced. Charles Ives, Aristotle, the man whose nickname is William Shakespeare, you know, Jonathan Swift, Henry Rodsworth Longfellow, you know, William Waltman. You don't see that anymore. You don't see that anymore. And it's all because the Democrats want to take God out of in God we trust and replace the word God with the word Satan, which in fact would make a lot more sense now that I think about it because the dollar has never been about God and that's why you know they always tell me that the love of money is the root of all evil no it's not money paper money in general is the root of all evil do you understand what I'm telling you guys do you get it do you understand I'm trying to help you here I mean, this country's in the worst state it's ever been, despite having a booming economy, despite having progressed so much better now to where black unemployment and Hispanic unemployment and Asian American unemployment and minority unemployment in general is the lowest it's ever been. All thanks to one businessman from New York named Donald Trump. You know, I listened to these impeachment inquiry hearings yesterday, and I instantly knew this was a deliberate, intentional obstruction of justice and a hit job on the President of the United States, Donald John Trump. But what they don't realize is 
if they impeach Donald Trump, they impeach themselves because Mike Pence is going to take the helm, an equally honorable man in his own right, and he's going to have them all fired. Because for three years, they would not accept the simple fucking fact that Donald Trump not only won the electoral vote, but the popular vote as well. Unlike Hillary Clinton, who can't say the same thing about herself. I mean, come on. What, are you, are you kidding me? Bullshit. It's bullshit. Speaking of which, let me let me go ahead and look at this. Let me let me look at some stuff, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and look at some stuff. Coverage of Joseph McGuire's system. Well, Joseph McGuire was telling the truth. Two hundred and eighteen House lawmakers now support an in bulls. What are you kidding me? Come on. This is just... This is all kinds of bullshit. You know? See... I'm just looking at all this, and it's laughable to me. It is laughable to me as to how full of shit the Democratic Party is. It is it's laughable to me. I, I just you know <laughs> You know? That's how laughable it is to me. I'm laughing on the inside, but on the outside I'm just freaking disgusted. You know? You know? Excuse me, I have to, I have to puke for a minute. <laughs> oh my God. Of the week. I would also like to make it official. Joe Biden is officially a drunk and or brain cancer patient. Yes, he's got the same disease that John McCain had. Glioblastoma. People, when you're in your mid-70s and have been forcing people to wipe your ass for decades as a career politician, and you become vice president of a nation for eight years and don't do jack. And then you want to run to be the number one guy in America, the president. Because being vice president is not good enough, apparently. Chances are you probably need to just go into a nursing home and just die. You're better off going into a nursing home and telling people to just let you die because you're not you're just not capable of doing this you know I wanna believe I wanna believe without a doubt that Joe Biden has at least a sense of honesty about him but unfortunately he's just like all the other fag Democrats he doesn't have even a single credible shred of honesty about him. Not one bit of honesty does he have. And I'm telling you now, that is the God's honest truth. You will not get that from many other people aside from me. So he slurs his speech while he's talking in front of a live crowd. And you wonder why Joe Biden was called a fool of low IQ by the North Korean media. Because the North Korean media, unlike the American media, 
are more than willing to call a Democrat out on his horse crap whenever they see fit. You know, it is not that hard. You understand? Anyway, thanks to Adam Copeland, you know, the guy who portrayed the WWE star Edge. That Adam Copeland, yeah. Adam Edge Copeland. I would like to thank him for giving you guys this wake-up call that you need. Because you guys need this wake-up call more now than ever. Because if you don't get this wake-up call, it's going to end up it's going to end up destroying you guys and i don't i don't want to see this country die a billion more deaths i don't want to see this country die any more deaths for that matter i want to see this country prosper to where people like me can't be killed just for speaking the truth you understand it's really that simple you know, truth is a powerful thing. It is. It really is. I will check on you guys next time. Until then, have a good one. Sanderson here. Say, I have a question. Do you hate scumbag politicians? Do you hate scum lords? And do you hate googly eyed fuckers like Adam Full of Schiff, Elizabeth Shitting Bull Warren, Eli Spamflex Cummings, Maisie Sabja Corona, Jerry Rat Shit Brown, Jed the Fig Flake, Barack Lecoq Satoro, Joe Who Biden, or in general, any jackass that believes in Andrew Jackson. If you do, then guess what? You came to the right place! <laughs> You're a fucking We go from this to Nancy Pelosi. Is this how America dies? Is this how America gets killed? By some 90 year old retarded terrorist former Nazi who could give a damn if America burns in flames or not? Is this how America ends? Is this how the American dream dies? Bullshit! Let me explain something to you people. There was a man named Abraham Lincoln. You know what he said? He said that we the people are the rightful owners of both Congress and the courts. Not to overthrow the Constitution, but to overthrow the men who would pervert the Constitution, meaning any Democrat in Washington. Thank God Elijah Cummings passed away last week. At least he doesn't have to be another part of this garbage. At least he doesn't have to suffer anymore. And believe me, this guy was suffering big time. This guy was done so badly on the inside that he couldn't take it anymore. And that's how he died. You understand, people? Hear me out when I say this. Seriously. Hear me out. 
just, just, you know, hear me out. They say that the 9-11 center is in New York. They're wrong. It's in Israel. Israel loves America to death. With a friend like that, why the hell would any enemy stand a chance against us if Israel has our back 24 hours a day? Or maybe, maybe, you know, John F. Kennedy, his quote, and by the way, John F. Kennedy was the greatest Democratic president that ever lived. You know what he said? Too often... We enjoy the comfort of opinion without the discomfort of thought. Imagine that. And and then there's this guy. This guy named Bodie Sanders. Martial artist. Extraordinaire. You know what he said? I'll read it to you verbatim. He said that you can't improve anything if you don't first know what needs to be improved. Let me remind you about what the Democrats have always been. I'm going to explain this to you guys very bluntly, very briefly, and very self-explanatorily. Democrats are for slavery, they are for terrorism, they are for voter fraud, they are for crime, they are for rapists and illegal immigrants and illegal immigration, they are for the slaughtering of defenseless innocent pets that we happen to have right now. They are for big pharma that poisons us, that breaks our brains in two. Is this how America dies? Bullshit! We have got to stop let this happening! We've got to stop letting this happen. If we don't, it's going to be too late. 13th Amendment. 23% of Democrats support it. Every Republican voted yes. 15th Amendment, right to vote for all. Every Republican supported it. Every Democrat rejected it. Citizenship to freed slaves, 14th Amendment. 94% of all Republicans supported it. No Democrats supported it. Not one single Democrat. And then of course the final nail in the coffin for this country, Obamacare, the Unaffordable Care Act, the Socialist Care Act. No Republicans supported that. You know why? Because that's not how health care is supposed to work. You understand, people? Let me explain some to you people, okay? James Comey! The same guy who writes a book and gets a New York Times bestseller for it. Deliberately never intended to investigate or hold crooked Hillary Clinton or the rest of her family accountable for any crimes that they had committed, any of the murders in their Clinton body count. Emails and documents from as early as June of 2016 confirm that James Comey was in bed with the Clintons and that no investigation would go forward. Is this how America dies? Bullshit.
We have got to stop letting this happen. We keep turning a blind eye. We keep ignoring it. And it just gets worse. Stop ignoring it. Wake up. Now. You wonder why CNN and the rest of the mainstream media. You wonder why I don't watch the news anymore on the mainstream media. You know why I don't watch Fox News or CNN or any of the mainstream media outlets? Because almost all of them are full of felonious, slanderous perjurers who could give a damn about their own profession if it meant selling their children down the river for nothing on the dollar first. That's how little they care about journalism. And that's how much they care about brainwashing you and throwing your focus off of this story just to cover baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 Are you kidding me? What? You mean to tell me you're going to get distracted by a talentless Taylor Swift album over a simple miscommunication. I don't understand that, guys. I thought America was better than this. America is supposed to be better than this, right? Oh, and oh, by the way, they had that that funeral of Elijah coming some time back as of me recording this on this day near the end of October 2019 Kay Hagen also passed away at around the same exact week go figure you think she was in bed with the Clintons too well we'll never know because she's dead tell you what guys Three thousand people died as a result of Bush letting Saudi Arabian terrorists from Al Qaeda steal thirty trillion dollars worth of information and bombing the Twin Towers. On his watch, this happened on George W. Bush's watch. He let this happen. Don't blame the Saudis for it. Blame George W. Bush and the rest of his stupid family. And it's not because they choose to be either. They're really smart people. But good God! How stupid are the decisions they make? How stupid are the things that come out of their mouths sometimes? It's amazing! 3,000 people die on September 11th, 18 years ago, and not one single shot was fired. You know why one single shot was not fired? Because the Saudis and Al-Qaeda and the Taliban and Osama bin Laden hijacked a plane and crashed it into the Twin Towers. And Bush let this happen! The President of the United States let this happen! At that time, the 43rd President of the United States. He let that happen. It is not a gun issue. You understand, people? Gun control will never be the answer. The answer is draining the swamp. Getting rid of every single career. You know, an amendment, if it were if a twenty eighth amendment were passed today, limiting all elected officials to no less than one term and no more than three 
Do you realize about three quarters of Congress would not be up for re-election? They would have to retire from their positions because they've been in there for so damn long? Do you realize that? That needs to be an amendment in our Constitution. That needs to happen. And with that, it's time for our Fag of the Week. Our Fag of the Week goes to Walmart because, well, not that I have anything against them. I don't. I think they're really good people. But their cigarettes, the cigarettes that they sell from all these different brands, have resulted in the deaths of millions of people. Think about that for a second. Why don't you? No, seriously, think about it. And with that, I'm going to tell you right now. Normally, I would come up with some witty cutaway gag, but I'm not going to. Because this is one of those times where you're supposed to pay homage to a dead person, or in this case, two dead persons, Elijah Cummings and Kay Hagen, respectively. Not that there's anything wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But Elijah Cummings was a completely brain-dead idiot who knew nothing about the profession that he was in. And he let his city, Baltimore, become a rat-infested mess. And then he realized it was too late. He realized it was too late. Heart attack. Dead. Gone. Bye-bye. You'll never see that guy alive again. And then Kay Hagen lost her battle with... A form of disease of something of some kind I don't remember what it is but I'm pretty sure that Fox 8 will cover that story for you if it hasn't already and you got to take into consideration right all this stuff that has happened happens for a reason these things don't just happen because they happen they happen because there's a very specific reason behind these things and these things happen because, well, we allow those things to happen, don't we? Of course we do. And now it's time for the... Hunter Biden! Imagine that, huh? The son of Joe Biden makes fifty thousand dollars a month working for a ukrainian company and a ukrainian prosecutor investigates said company when hunter's dad joe biden then vice president holds up a billion dollars in aid until the prosecutor is fired Joe Biden and the rest of his dumbass family want to say that it's all Trump's fault. Motherfucker, it's not Trump's fault. You did that. You did that. That's your doing. And yet you want to blame Trump for it even though he had nothing to do with it? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't believe this. Yes, Democrats are that stupid. In case you didn't realize that. Let me let me let me explain something to you, okay? For another shankity shank moment. Islam is being taught in schools. Why is it being taught in schools? Because the government used to have an Islamist for president. You know, Barack Obama, the terrorist, the socialist, 
the same guy who was illegally immigrated here by his parents from Kenya to Hawaii? Yes, that Barack Obama. That guy who created ISIS. Your kids should never bow down to Islam. Ever. Keep Islam out of public schooling. Or don't bother going to public school. Have your family and your neighbors homeschool you themselves and they will most likely give you a far better education in one day than you could get in a public school setting in 13 years. Try that on for size. Here's another shankity shank for you. George Soros! You remember me mentioning him earlier in this episode? Yeah. That's the guy who was in bed with Hitler during World War II. Take a look at this guy. Yeah, that's him. That's him. George Soros. That's the man. That's the man. The same guy who heads the World Health Organization. The who? The World Health Organization. The who? That's the same guy who was in bed with Hitler during World War II. I got another shankity shank moment for you. You're, you're never going to believe this. You're, you're not going to believe this, right? You are not going to believe... Get, get this, get this. Jimmy freaking Carter created the Department of Education in 1979. Do you realize that since then, America has went from being first in the world to 17th in the world in education? Do you people realize that? If you don't, you probably need to get your head checked. Because I'm telling you now, it is an absolute irrefutable fact. Snopes will never discuss this as being fact. They'll just, they'll just pass it off as being another hearsay rumor, but what I'm telling you now about Jimmy Carter, that is fact. That is fact, ladies and gentlemen. Next segment. Anybody got another segment going on? Anybody? Okay, I'll just, I'll just, I'll, I'll do this bastard thing myself. You guys know that selective retardation is an epidemic in our nation, right? This is part of the reason why. A very big part of the reason why. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez! What a loser! What a loser! And a disgrace! A disgrace to the human race! What a joke. New York was stupid enough to put this, this woman, into Congress. Yes, people in New York were that stupid. They were that naive. They're probably regretting their decision now. Just like they're regretting ever rehiring Jerry Brown to essentially turn California into a fire ring. Get it? Fire ring? Hired? Fired? Get the punchline? California is burning to a crisp, and it's all because of Jerry Brown and all the politicians in California. And Gavin Newsom, Jerry Brown's replacement. If you don't think California is a dictatorship, then you got another thing coming. Let me tell you. Because California is such a dictatorship, you have no idea. You have no idea. So, 99.7 
percent of the 11 million Muslims in the Middle East were killed by Muslims, other Muslims. Only three tenths of a percent have been killed by Israel in the 66 years of conflict between 1948-2014. And yet Israel is being accused of being the root of the Middle East's problems? No. The only problem in the Middle East are the Muslims. They just keep having babies and killing each other and killing everything else under the sun too. Then they want to immigrate here. They want to legally immigrate here and kill natural born. So, no, it doesn't work that way. It's not supposed to work that way, ladies and gentlemen, but that's how it works. The politicians lie to you with their broken stare and they tell you they're going to do something and they do the opposite of what they tell you they're going to do. You know I'm not making this up, guys. You know I'm not making this up. And and you know why? It's all facts. It's all true. It's all true. And it's so funny to me, man. It really is. Speaking of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez... She is one of four primary reasons not to reelect her or any Democrat for that matter. You see these four women? They are four definitively good reasons why you should never pass up the opportunity to reelect Donald Trump. This is a once and only opportunity. You only get one shot. We re-elect Trump next year and America is going to continue thriving. If we don't jump at the chance next year to re-elect Donald Trump for a second and last term, it's all over. All that progress he made throughout the last three and a half years, gone. You understand people so we went from Abraham Lincoln to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in 160 years where the hell did we go wrong I don't have any idea except Ulysses S. Grant fucking ruined it for us when he sold America to the Rothschilds and the D.C. Organic Act that he passed along with the 44th Congress in 1871. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You want to know why America's dead? Blame Ulysses S. Grant. You know, I really, I really think there are a lot of misinformed people out there. People that have no idea what's going on. People that have been lied to by the mainstream, the mainstream media. I will not refer to them as the mainstream media anymore because they feign everything that they report. They falsify everything that they cover. They make sh up as they go along. And you wonder why they're not trusted anymore. There you go. I'm going to hit you guys up with another segment and then I'm getting the heck out of here. And you wonder why I'm not ever going to have another Twitter account as long as I live. Because the same guy that runs it is also a man 
who is synonymous with an animal which I will refer to as a jackass. Jack Dorsey, everybody. The guy who claims to eat only once a day because he runs a big fat company that is also a technocracy. In early 2018, Twitter axed more than 70 million suspicious accounts over several months. This event was referred to as the Twitter purge. Additionally, going forward, if the company is unable to deal with the menace of fake accounts, it is very likely to continue its downward spiral this year, which it is. It is. And it will continue its downward spiral in 2020 and 2021, or however long it takes for them to finally go out of business. The problem is, they're not going out of business because Twitter owns themselves, and most importantly, they're owned by Google. Social credit systems don't work, everybody. They don't work! Do you understand? Do you understand? I mean, it's, it's really, it's really not that hard. It's actually, it's just sad. It's just sad, man. And you know, in 2016, in February of 2016, ISIS directly threatened the best boyfriends themselves, Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey. Go figure. I don't know, man. It's just so ridiculous to me. It is so ridiculous. I'm telling you, I'm being completely serious. Twitter is the Titanic. Twitter is the Titanic. Except this is 2019 and the Titanic sank in 1912. Good luck figuring out the reference to that. And I'm not talking about Leonardo DiCaprio either. Not to be confused with the movie of the same name, Titanic, from 1997 or 8. Not to be confused with that. I'm talking about the ship. It's really not that hard, though. But y you guys get it, right? And that's going to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been Kevin the Skull Anderson. You have been my loyal viewers. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to hearing from you guys again very, very, very soon. I got new episodes coming out very soon, so don't go away. See you next time. Feel free to like it, though you probably won't. Sanderson here. Say, I have a question. Do you hate scumbag politicians? Do you hate scum lords? And do you hate googly-eyed fuckers like Adam Full of Schiff, Elizabeth Shitting Bulwark, Eli Spamflex Cummings, Maisie Sabja Corona, Jerry Rat Shit Brown, Jay the Fig Flake, Barack Lecoq Satoro, Jill Who Biden, or in general, any jackass that believes in Andrew Jackson. Oh. <gasps>
If you do, then guess what? You came to the right place. <laughs> ah! You're a fucking This is a CBS News special report. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to season six of Spot the Liberal. I am yours truly, Kevin the Skull Anderson. Coming to you live from your wildest nightmares, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to explain to you, I'm going to explain to you why this country is worse off now than Germany was during the rise and reign of Hitler. Why do I bring that up? Because there are so many Americans that are stupid enough to believe in the lies of a Democratic Party that they would set aside all logic and common sense and reason just to listen to what these blithering freaking idiots have to say. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Joe Biden, right? One of his most recent speeches. And hell, any of his speeches within the last year, any of his speeches and all. See, the American media is a complete laughing stock because they downplayed Biden's poor performance as a quote unquote drinking problem, even though in reality it was more like a thinking problem you know why it was a thinking problem because Joe Biden has brain cancer everybody the same brain cancer that took the life of Senator John McCain that turncoat that piece of crap right I will be age restricting all of my videos by the way moving forward because I don't trust myself to go against YouTube's guidelines, even though they're shit. Even though I understand that they're complete and total shit. I will abide by YouTube's rules for as long as the site remains active. And God knows how long that's going to be. But anyway, North Korea depicts Joe Biden as a fool of low IQ. And you know what? They're absolutely right. They're absolutely right. The same could be said with any Democrat in Washington. Any single Democrat in Washington and some Republicans. Now you know why democracy is dead. Because for the last three and a half years, Democrats have been committing and continue to commit and have committed the worst waste of taxpayer money in recorded history. Why? I don't know. They just want to get rid of some guy who happens to be president of the United States who did nothing wrong, by the way. He did nothing wrong and they're trying to impeach his ass. For no reason. Folks, if that is not convincing enough for you to go out there and vote straight Republican, this November in 2020 then quite frankly there's something very 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 wrong with you and you need to see a doctor or a professional and get help because you are just so far beyond the point of repair at that point that getting professional help would be the only thing for you at this point so here's the deal here's the deal right here's the deal here's the thing I'm going to explain this to you as only I can. CBS has been providing coverage of the impeachment trial in the Senate. I don't know why they do this, but for some reason, CBS viewership has dropped very, very significantly in the last few weeks or months or years or however long it's been because millions of Americans, believe me or don't, are discovering that CBS is complete bird shit. It is complete bird shit, everybody. And you wonder why I made an animation depicting how full of shit CBS is. 
Because that's what they are. The same with the completely nonsensical Nazi network, CNN. The same with nothing but crap or NBC. The same with pure bullshit or PBS. The same with absolute bullcrap or ABC, which, by the way, offers the worst talk show in the history of television, The View, which features the talents or lack thereof of five of the most staunch liberals you will ever see in your life. And combined, they don't even measure up to the brain power that I have in one cell in my brain. And there are a hundred billion of them. Millions of Americans discover that CBS is complete bird shit because CBS is complete bird shit. And it lies to their viewers. And just recently, just recently, just recently, they extended Face the Nation to an hour and curdled freaking in touch to 30 minutes. It used to be an hour, folks. It used to be an hour. It's now 30 minutes. Why? Because CBS is complete bird shit. That's why. Oh, by the way, this story that you see about Cory Booker trying to find a way to snatch that snatch on New Year's Eve 1984, that's legitimate. That is a real story, which you will not find on CNN or MSNBC or Bloomberg Television or anything that has a liberal agenda. Anything that has a notified liberal fascist agenda. You're not going to find it in those places. And those places are becoming fewer and fewer to find the truth. This is one of them. You want the truth, you got it here. There you go. And now I'm going to explain to you the reason why for the last four to five years I have been on a conquest to ensure a limited government. Enter the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is so full of shift that they have become the party of crime, of fraud, of robbery, of racism, of reverse racism, and of the Rothschild dynasty. Yes, they are owned by the Rothschilds. Now imagine, if you will, imagine what it would look like if the government was completely honest with you. This is what you would get. This picture right here. Breaking freaking news everybody the government does not give a damn about you but they will once there's a Republican supermajority in November but it can't happen without your help you gotta get your butts off of the couches go to the voting polls vote straight Republican and do your civic duty in ensuring that this country becomes Christian again. That we can make America Christian again. Now I'm all for freedom of religion. Don't get me wrong. I believe that freedom of religion should be taken seriously. But when it's abused to such a level that a Muslim becomes president of the United States, that's where you got to draw the line. And that is why the Democratic Party are full of crooks, frauds, cheats, and liars. That's why every January 22nd, 
upon the declaration of President Donald John Trump Sr. Every January 22nd is a day of national human life sanctity. Every January 22nd is National Sanctity of Human Life Day, according to President Trump. And you know what? He's right to declare that day a day of national sanctity. Kind of like how he's right about how the Democrats have been screwing you red, white, and blue for over 200 years. See, this whole Medicare for all thing, this Medicare for all stick, will never, ever work. You know why? I'll explain it to you. It's not going to work because Medicare for all will come with, get this, you're not going to believe me, a 42% national sales tax? What? You mean to tell me, oh, if you like your health care plan, you can keep your health care plan, but you're going to get screwed up the butt with a 42% sales tax. And if you do don't like your health care plan, if you hate your health care plan, guess what? You're stuck with it. We don't have to be on it, but you're stuck on it because we keep screwing you up the butt with absolutely no loop. That's what it would look like if the government was actually honest with you. If they were completely honest with you, that's what it would look like. Everybody, listen to me. Please, listen to me. In 1871, Ulysses S. Grant made the biggest gaffe in human history when he turned the ownership of America over to the Rothschilds in what we now know as the very dismal, very damning 1871 District of Columbia Organic Act, except there's nothing organic about it. Everything about it was designed to offer a Rothschild-appointed satanic agenda. That's right, people. You know I'm not lying about it. You know I'm right. And there may be a chance that I might get killed for telling the truth because it's illegal to tell the truth now. You do realize that, right? It's illegal to tell the truth because the government doesn't want a nation of critical thinkers. If we have a nation of critical thinkers, the government won't get to tell us how to live our lives anymore. We'll have a lot more freedom. But we still got to abide by the rules. And that's what critical thinking is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to explain this to you. Cutting health care to illegal aliens will cover the cost of Trump's wall. That way, Mexico will not have to pay for it. And U.S. taxpayers won't have to pay for it either. I'm dead serious. That's why we need another amendment to our Constitution, limiting all elected congressional officials to serve no more than two terms in office. It's got to happen, people. It's got to happen. Do you realize if Amendment 28 in this particular fashion were to be passed and ratified, 90% of all elected officials would not be up for re-election. Too many old faces over the age of 80. We need to change that. Now, I know I've said this before, and yes, that is my ugly mug that you see right there. And I do have an ugly mug. Don't try to tell me different. But, ladies and gentlemen, America is not supposed to be a democracy. It's just supposed to have a democratic electoral process. Democracy was never supposed to be anything more than an electoral process. But Andrew Jackson, King Sh you know what he did? He screwed all that up and destroyed the foundations of our nation in its current state 
by allowing it to become a political party. And that's why you and I, ladies and gentlemen, as much as I hate to burst your bubbles, have been getting screwed up the butt with no lube for over 200 years. Ladies and gentlemen, Melania Trump recently led a Melbourne, Australia crowd in reciting Psalm 23, the Lord's Prayer. You know the one that goes with, the Lord is my Savior, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. You know that Lord's Prayer? That Psalm 23? Yeah. It's really, really simple. It's really simple. Here's the thing, okay? You gotta understand. You have got to understand. Do not, I repeat, do not vote for a Democrat in November. You're gonna kill your damn country if you vote Democrat. And you're going to end up committing suicide, too, by default. Even though you won't be actually doing it, the government will just be doing it for you, except you have allowed them to do that. Do not vote a Democrat into office this November. Do not re-elect a Democrat to any elected official position this November. Vote straight Republican. Do what I did in 2016. Do what I did back then and vote straight Republican. I'm going to do it again in 2020. Why not let you have a shot? You got to go out there and vote straight Republican too. It's the only way we're going to save this damn country and make it Christian again. With emphasis on the freedom of religion. Because we got to have that still. We got to have that. That's absolutely necessary. And get this, get this. You're not going to believe this. Biden says, drunk driving is not a felony. Really? It's not a felony? You being in office is a felony. You stupid ass. Freaking Joe Biden. And don't get me started on Ulysses S. Grant, the sellout, because I already talked about it before. Let me explain something to you, okay? The American dream is a lie. I'm not the only one who have said that. Many, many other people before me have said that, including most notably the late comedian and philosopher George Carlin. What? You didn't expect me to tell you that George Carlin was a freaking philosopher as a comedian? He every just about everything that he said was right. Granted, I don't agree on his views on God, but pretty much everything else that he said about America is spot the hell on. We need more George Carlins out there. We need more critical thinkers. The media and academia, they don't want that. They don't want that because they're afraid the critical thinkers are going to rebel against them and expose their fraudulent lies for exactly what they are. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you without a shadow of a doubt in my mind, that's the truth and I know it. And you should too. Explain this to me. You know, going back to Adam full of Schiff, the government is full of crooks, okay? Not all of them are full of crooks. They're not they're not all full of crooks, but many of them are crooks. They back the New York Times. They back the Rothschilds. 
they back Raytheon, they back Monsanto, they back the Koch brothers and CNN and Goldman Sachs and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and AIG the latter three of which were responsible for the 2008 Great Recession that happened in this country just over a decade ago as of me recording this this day January the 24th on a Friday 2020 if you don't get it now if you don't see it for what it is now then you're gonna die in your sleep never knowing what the truth really is because people the Democratic Party want you dead they want you dead and they will stop at absolutely nothing at all until that agenda is successfully completed you wonder why CBS viewership is dropping so sharply you wonder why CNN is losing viewers out the butt this is why because all they do all they do is report completely nonsensical nitwitty garbage that is all they do, ladies and gentlemen. That is all they do. And I'm telling you, as much as the day is long, if you go into this election not knowing this and choosing not to know this, and you vote Democrat, do you realize how stupid you people are going to look? You guys got to wake up. You don't want to end up like Arizona. You don't want to end up like California. You don't want to end up like New York or Chicago. You don't want to end up like these places. You got to vote straight Republican. It's the only way it's going to happen. It's the only way we're going to have any chance of getting a 28th Amendment of exactly the caliber that I explained into action because every single politician has to have a limit to their power two terms that's it two terms that's all they get I'm serious not to mention the fact that they won't tell you about those Catholic priests assaulting survivors or sexually abusing other people or minors the media will not tell you that the Catholic priests and the Catholic faith is really an excuse it's nothing more than an excuse the same way being a Muslim is an excuse the same way Islam is an excuse to promote a religion that worships Satan Catholicism is anti-Christianity or at least that's what I think it is you don't have to agree I encourage you to give me your thoughts on it in the comments box below you can if you want that's your decision I'm not gonna tell you otherwise and oh oh look at this look at this MLK's niece Martin Luther King Jr's niece defends Donald Trump against racism accusations saying that all that news is absolutely fake and you know what you know what Martin Luther King Jr's niece is absolutely right she is absolutely right because all of those accusations are complete bullshit
This is why it is so important that when it comes to conceal carry permits, you got to protect your Second Amendment rights. I do not say this to scare you. I say this to protect you, to warn you of what's going to happen if even one Democrat gets reelected this November. They're going to take away your Second Amendment rights. They're going to take away your rights, period. You won't have any rights by the time they're done screwing you up the butt with no lube. Because that's what happens when you elect a Democrat. We had an illegal immigrant, terrorist, communist, Muslim for president for eight years at one point. You think we'd learn our lesson by now, but the people in California and Arizona and New York and Chicago, they're never going to learn their lesson because they're too stupid to. You know why? Because they choose mediocrity. They choose politicians instead of actual real leaders that can debunk and expose the crimes of the politicians. Not sure if I said that right, but I don't care. Let me explain this to you, okay? Here's the deal. If liberal politicians, this is a post from Right Edge Magazine on Facebook, if liberal politicians treat the people this poorly when we're armed to the teeth, what the hell do you think they're going to do once they've taken away your guns, once they've taken away your money, once they've taken away your homes, once they've taken away your rights and your privilege to freedom of religion and press and speech. Imagine that, right? Imagine what that's going to do. That's going to do a pretty damning number, isn't it? Anyway, I have been Kevin the Skull Anderson. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Spot the Liberal. Please share this with as many people as you can. But, like I said, I'm age-restricting all of my videos. So, if you're under 18, you're going to have to get a parent to watch this show. You cannot watch it alone. The truths portrayed in this show are so damning that they require a mature person of a certain evolution to accept these truths and put them to power. You know how Steve Wilco said on his show early on in his run that his show was more on free TV? Spot the liberal is more on free TV. That means morons cannot watch. It is so simple. Good day, everybody. Stop it. 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 Welcome, everybody, to the latest episode of Spot the Liberal. I am Kevin the Skull Anderson. It's a sad day in America. A very, very sad day because 71 million people, 71 million people were stupid enough and naive enough to elect a dementia suffering. 78-year-old known pedophile and sex offender in Joseph R. Biden, former vice president of eight years, by the way, 
to the presidency of the United States. How far gone does a nation have to be to be that fucking dumb? I'm sorry, there, there's no excuse for it. I voted first day of early voting, October 15th of this year, 2020, straight Republican ticket. Anyone that had an R next to their name, I voted for them. And as much as I love to think, as much as I want to believe that America has any hope and change coming to them, sadly, it's just going to be hopelessness and stagnation. It's not going to be hope and change. It's the opposite of that. That's exactly what Obama promised to deliver. Even though he promised hope and change, he really delivered stagnation and hopelessness and despair and $5 a gallon gas in some places. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but to all you black people and liberal women out there that voted for Joseph R. Biden, fuck you. Fuck you all. You fucked up this country because you were stupid enough to elect a Democrat to be President of the United States in the most important election in human history. How fucking dumb does a majority of voters have to be to vote straight Democrat? How stupid is that? I mean, I'm... I'm at a loss for words right now. I don't know what to think. You know, I'm recording this in my basement. Of all the places that I could record, I chose to record in my basement because I felt like it was the perfect place to vent out my frustrations for the next 40 minutes. We are so far gone as a nation now because we decided to elect a known dementia-suffering pedophile to the presidency, the oldest man to be elected president since Donald Trump four years ago, by an eight-year margin. Well, I guess the third time's really the charm, isn't it, considering Joseph Biden had ran for president three times, including this time. You know, not to mention the other two failed presidential bids he had wagered on in 2012 and 2016, knowing that he was going to lose. And then you have all these people trying to tell me that I can't name one thing that Donald Trump has done. Well, he got us out of the Iran nuclear deal. He got us out of NAFTA. He got us out of the Paris Accord. He got us out of so many disastrous treaties, so many disastrous deals made by our predecessors that were president before him. So many things he got us out of, and it saved us so much grief, so much money, and yet 71 plus million people in this nation, I'm, I'm sad to say it, but they're completely fucking retarded and they just do not acknowledge it because they were naive enough to vote for a Democrat, not just any Democrat, a Democrat who had been the vice president for eight years and made a complete laughing stock of the vice presidency. Oh, and now he's going to be president for at least the next two years. Or better yet, he's not because he's he's got dementia, as I mentioned earlier. Because, you know, he referred to his granddaughter by the name Bo Biden. Bo Biden as in his dead military veteran son who died of cancer. If that doesn't tell you how far gone Joseph Biden is... Oh, and he's a known racist, too. There's, 
There's a video on YouTube called The Racist History of Joe Biden. Jim Crow Joe, they call him. You know, I'd love to think that America isn't the dumbest nation on earth, but judging based on what I've seen today and yesterday, I think it's safe to say that we Americans, through the fault of like 71 or 72 million people, have cemented our status as the most ignorant, miseducated, misguided nation in the history of the human race. And this human race has been around how long? At least 200,000 years in its modern state. Of course, we evolved from monkeys, according to Charles Darwin, so technically that would make it more like 4 or 5 million years, but this is a sad day. It really is. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say it like that, but it's a sad day. And now, and now look at this. The Democrats are going to retain the House. The Democrats are probably going to take over the freaking Senate. So, now what happens? Well, I'm going to tell you what happens. Because you voted for a Democrat, the Green New Deal is going to be extended and put into effect. And it's going to cause tens of millions of people to lose their benefits and lose their jobs and die in poverty because some stupid freaking liberals decided to vote for a pedophile in Joseph Biden. I can't believe I'm having a... I can't, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I really... I really don't... I really don't get it, you know? I really don't get it. And it it bothers me it bothers me immensely that we as a nation could be that fucking stupid. I'm sorry. It it just bothers me. And I really do not understand for the fucking life of me. Right? Here's here's the big insult, right? Here's the big insult. Of all the things we could have done as a nation, of all the things we could have done as a nation, we did the one thing that we should have never done, we did the one thing that we should have never done, and we elected Joe Biden. Joe the plum dumb Biden to a presidency that he never deserved. That fucking bothers me. That bothers me. A lot. And I don't I don't get it. I don't understand why people have to be this dumb, this abruptly, for no reason. I don't, I don't get it. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't understand why people have to be this stupid to vote for a Democrat that they know is going to raise their taxes by four fucking trillion dollars. This is this is what gets me most of all, right? Here's here's what really here's what really gets my goat, right? We have a government that hates us, right? We have a bunch of Democrats in Congress that hate the ever living fuck out of us. To the point of assuming that we work for them, not the other way around. Well, newsflash, black people, newsflash, 
white liberals, newsflash, the government works for us, all of us. We do not work for them. We don't work for them. They work for us. We elect them to be our employees. And yet, in an election where literally everything is on the line, see, this is, this is what bothers me, right? We are a nation supposedly of critical thinkers, but we fucking speak before we think. We speak before we... This is what makes us the dumbest nation on the planet. I know that I've said it. I don't know how many times I've said it on my previous channel on YouTube. But we really are the dumbest nation on the planet. By doing what we did in this election. And it's just sad because it didn't have to be like this. It it didn't have to be like this. We could have saved ourselves... From a Donald Trump, pre- from a Joe Biden presidency, we could have saved ourselves four years of Biden and Harris. And what do we do? We do what we always do best, ladies and gentlemen. We Americans fucked up. We fucked up. This is really, this is really the kind of paradox that makes us stand out as a nation. Right? And this is... It's just... It's just... I don't get it anymore. We had so much potential with Donald Trump, and he's done so much for us. He got us out of all these disastrous deals. He he helped... He contributed in the death of ISIS and its leader, and... He was responsible for saving countless nations from terroristic threats. And the one thing we shouldn't have done, we did anyway. We denied him a second term in the White House. And that, in my opinion, is not only one big-ass mistake, America... But it also cements us as the dumbest nation on the planet. And I I do genuinely believe that. I do. I do believe that. You want to know why? You want to know why? I'll tell you why. Okay? Hear me out on this. Please. If you could spend at least 27 more minutes of your time. Listen to me. As I try to make the case. When the people at Fox News knew it was bullshit, they called the race in Arizona, even though only 74% of the total votes had been cast and balloted. Even though only three quarters of the total votes cast were counted. They called the race in Arizona for Joe Biden. Why did they do that? I don't know. Maybe they just got trigger happy. Maybe they shit the bed. Who knows? I don't fucking know. I don't even care. But there's a guy that works as the Political analyst of some sorts, or whatever you call it. He calls races as he sees them. And he was interviewed by Fox News. One of their own was interviewed by Fox News. And he said that he didn't see there being enough votes for Donald Trump to secure Arizona. Even though only three quarters of the votes that were cast were counted. There had to be at least 800,000 more votes that had yet to be counted. Now, as of an hour ago, I would say 430 
as of 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, an hour ago. There are still 14% of the votes in Arizona that have not yet been counted. Those votes could easily swing the Biden won state in Trump's favor and therefore secure Trump a second term in the White House. That's the only hope we have now, folks. This is what separates us from potentially four or eight years of the worst legislation ever passed by a government in history, including the 93 trillion dollar Green New Deal. See, socialism has been tried in this country before, in case you haven't figured it out yet. Socialism has been tried in America before. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Andrew Jackson tried it. I'm pretty sure Ulysses S. Grant, even though he didn't mean to, who is the great-great-great-grandfather of one of my neighbors, I'm pretty sure he tried it at some point, even though he didn't realize what he was doing was completely screwing this nation red, white, and blue, thus making America red, white, and screwed as a corporation of the Rothschild Central Bank. Look up the 1871 D.C. Organic Act and you'll see exactly what I mean, okay? Seriously. Now, as you can see, as you can see, this is a slideshow right now that you are viewing in real time as it was recorded across Run a little bit more later. than, say, 24 hours. Look at Michigan. Biden was leading in that state by little less or little more than 45,000 votes. All those people there had the bright idea. 58,000 people somehow had the bright idea to vote for a third-party candidate in Joe Jorgensen. Who the hell is he or she? Who the hell is Joe Jorgensen? That's someone I've never heard of before. I didn't even know that Joe Jorgensen was running for president. If I had known that, I probably would have never voted. I'm serious. I'm not even lying. I'm I'm not I'm not kidding. This is legitimately fact. Okay? So you're going to you're going to see what happens to Michigan in just a few minutes, right? Because this was taken just a few, just a couple of hours after this screenshot was taken. Now, look at all the people that voted for a third party candidate. 58,000 voted for Jorgensen, 13,000 for Hawkins, don't know who that is, 7,000 voted for Blankenship, an independent candidate, don't know who that is. 3,000 people voted for De La Fuente. Don't know who that is either. Probably an illegal immigrant from somewhere in South America, probably. Originally, I would have to say. Or maybe not. I don't know. I'm just probably jumping to conclusions like I'm notorious for doing. But, America. We're supposed to be a land of the free, a home of the brave. We're supposed to be a nation for, of, and by the people, and for all the people, including the 70-some million people that voted for Joe Biden, who clearly are going to get everything that's coming to them now, because they don't know what real hope and change is, because they had that for freaking four fucking years, and then they fucked that up when they voted for Joe Biden. See, this is what I don't understand, right? 
if it weren't for social media, if it weren't for the internet, we would not have all this information that we have at our disposal regarding Joe Biden. We would not have known that he was a dementia-suffering pedophile, and probably still is, as far as I'm concerned. We would not have known that Arizona was called way too early, at about the worst possible time, when still, as of this very moment, as I speak to you, probably 300,000 more votes have yet to be counted over there. Now, in case you haven't figured out, black people were brought into this country by southerners of European descent some 500, 400 years ago through slave ships. Slavery existed back then. You might even say it still exists now, even though it was supposed to have been abolished in 1865 or 1863 by Abraham Lincoln, who, by the way, was responsible for resolving the Civil War in the favor of the Union and not the Confederacy who surrendered to the Union through General Robert E. Lee. Here's what gets me, right? Here's what gets me. We are a nation. Under God, in the visible, well, we're not anymore, obviously. But we're supposed to be a nation. Under God, in the visible, with liberty and justice for all. But apparently, somewhere down the line, we screwed that up when we elected Andrew Jackson to become our president in 1828. We somehow screwed that up, and we somehow screwed ourselves so far up the butt that Andrew Jackson enacted a genocidal act known as the Trail of Tears that forced Native Americans to move from their God-given lands that they had owned for thousands of years to other states in, say, Utah. Idaho, something like that. And now what we have, now what we have is a nation of dwindling indigenous attendance. There are only like 4 million Native Americans left in this country. About, probably not even 4 million, probably more like 3 million. Or three and a half million. But here, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, we should know we have a nation is a liberal, ugly bastard. that is supposed to be proficient in critical thinking, the number one leading country in inventions. And so, what we have here, When I took this screenshot, it was Biden 248, Trump 214. Am I right or am I right? And it's just, it really, really boggles my mind. It really boggles my mind to think of how stupid a decision that we made as a nation. It really, really boggles my mind. I... I don't know what to say now. I don't. So I'm just going to I'm just going to yammer on for the next I don't know how long. And I'm going to continue making this case for at least the next 15 minutes at most about 17. So ladies and gentlemen, we are supposed to have a constitution that allows us to vote for people that we think are the right candidates for the job. But unfortunately, we voted for, for a man who not only wants to defund the police, not only wants to take God out of schools and churches, 
but will abuse the Constitution and trample on it in the same way that Andrew Jackson did, that Richard Nixon did, that Ulysses S. Grant did. Remember, this is this is one of my neighbor's great 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 grandfathers we're talking about here. In the way that Ulysses S. Grant supposedly did when he signed into law the 1871 DC Organic Act, like I don't know, like Woodrow Wilson did when he created the fucking Federal Reserve. You remember that? The history books won't teach you that anymore. I can tell you that. They won't teach you that shit anymore. Because history books are full of lies now. Schools are just so behind the times, it's unbelievable. And and now, and look at what we got here. Okay? Look at what we have here. We are supposed to be a constitutional republic. You know why we're not a constitutional... You know why we're supposedly a democracy now? Because Thomas Jefferson had the bright idea of extending the electoral process into a political party and an electoral process, and not only did he make a mistake in doing that, not only did he make a mistake in doing that, but this country, two years after his death in 1826, elected a man hell-bent on anti-constitution legislation. Of course, I'm talking about Andrew Jackson, the same Andrew Jackson who ordered the Trail of Tears to be enacted and therefore resulting in the deaths since then, leading to now, of almost 100 million Native Americans, which is why there are so few of them left now. And there's going to be a lot fewer of them after Biden is done being president or trying to play president. And, of course, we know he's not going to last three months because he suffers from dementia. In case you haven't figured that out yet. Look, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but... You know... I'm going to make a bold... I'm going to make a very, very, very unpopular opinion. And I know it might offend you. I know it might piss you off. But I'm going to call it like it is. I'm going to call it the way I see it. I might not be right for saying this, but black people should have never been given the right to vote. Women should have never been given the right to vote either. If If the people knew that giving blacks and white women the right to vote would lead to this, a Biden presidency of, of course, that won't happen if Arizona turns the tide in Trump's favor, that won't happen, obviously. But only if Arizona turns the tide in Trump's favor, then we can stop worrying about Biden possibly being our 46th president, and we can focus on Trump rebuilding our economy again after the Democrats destroyed it this year in 2020. As if the 2008 financial crisis wasn't enough. Eight years later, they are hell-bent on destroying a man's reputation as a world-famous multi-billionaire businessman who did a lot of good for this world before he was elected president and has done a lot of good since, leading up to the election this year, 2020. Here's where this gets really fucked up. Michigan had been called about 5 o'clock this evening, November the 4th, 2020, Wednesday, Eastern Standard Time. 99% of the votes were counted. And that means... Well, of course we know what that means. Unless Arizona gets its shit together in the next couple of days, Biden, a dementia-suffering pedophile, who is hell-bent on defunding every police station in every city in this country, 
is going to be our president. This is what angers me. This is what bothers me. Right? And the Chinese knew about the coronavirus outbreak in Wuhan, in their province of Hebei, before it got sent and shipped to all these other countries and territories. And they didn't tell a damn soul about it. They didn't tell America about it. They didn't tell England about it. They told nobody about it. And that's why the world hates China. Back to the point. Back to the point now. If 71 million people knew that Joe Biden was going to defund their police departments in their respective cities and states and potentially pack the courts with liberals, why the fuck, why would they even bother going out in droves to vote for Joe motherfucking Biden? I don't understand that either. Because, you know, I hate to say it like this, but America dies tonight. There is no America anymore. It's it's now it's now Venezuela light. Venezuela very light. You know why? Except we don't we don't have an excuse. Venezuela had an excuse. They had an opportunity to change the course of history in their in their part of the world and elect someone similar to their previous leader before they elected Nicolas Maduro, a fucking bus driver who knew nothing about politics, by the way. And look what happened to them. They are now eating out of trash bags. They are now eating out of garbage cans. They're standing in line, waiting for bread, knowing that it's going to cost them everything that they've got just to get one piece of of bread. One piece of bread. One piece of bread. It'll cost you everything that you got in Venezuela. <laughs> just, just. <laughs> oh. We Americans are such fucking idiots. We don't know who we're voting for until it's too late, and then we get fucked up the ass because of our own shortcomings. We are literally a nation of screw-ups. We're a nation of probably the dumbest people on the planet who have no idea what they're getting into now because Joe Biden is probably going to be our next president. I'm sad to say. And then you got all these people. Oh, by the way, just a quick, just a quick off topic note, completely unrelated. Rush Limbaugh has terminal cancer. He's not going to be on this planet much longer. Back to the topic again. Notice the pattern here? If we were to elect people that know what the hell they're doing, right? People like Christy Bonnet in North Carolina. At least North Carolina's got its shit together. It voted for the right person this time. Donald fucking Trump. The greatest president of any president in American history since Abraham Lincoln, at least since Abraham Lincoln. I mean, if nothing else, right? I mean, seriously, I mean, this is just, this is me being real with you, okay? To all you black people and to all you liberal women that voted for Donald Trump, 
I mean, don't, I mean, no disrespect when I say this, but you fucked this nation up by voting for Joe Biden. You killed this nation. Just saying. Just saying. And do you know what he's going to do when he gets in Washington? Oh, by the way, by the way, Arizona was called, even though 84% of the votes had already been counted, which is not nearly enough to call race, by the way. <laughs> oh, my God. The only saving grace that we have now is Arizona and the Supreme Court. Luckily, it's a 6-3 to three Supreme Court in favor of the conservatives, which I'm pretty sure will do the right thing and, and, and tell us all about the crimes that Joe Biden committed while he was vice president and in his 47 years, 48 years as a politician. He, he pretty much gave up his right to be a human being when he became a politician because he knew what he was getting himself into and didn't even care to know that whatever he was getting into. This is why some people shouldn't belong in politics. Like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. You might as well call her Abby Cadabby at this point. From Sesame Street. Like I said, to all you black people and liberals, to all you black people and white women that voted for Donald Trump, that voted for Donald Trump, thank you. Because you've done so much good just by voting. All you first time voters that voted for Donald Trump this year, thank you. But to all you people who voted Joe Biden, oh my God. You're going to get so fucked up the ass, you're not even going to see it coming. And it's going to be well-deserved, too, because you know what? That Green New Deal is going to be passed. And when it gets passed, oh, boy. You guys are going to be so screwed. You're going to be red, white, and screwed. I'm telling you, this is, this is not a joke. This is really happening. I'm I'm serious. This is actually happening. I'm telling you what. We as a nation it's we've we've come to this as a nation. No other nation in the history of the world has fallen so far from grace so quickly as us. I swear to God, I I'm I'm telling you, I could, I could name a couple examples of nations that might be an exception to the rule, <coughs> Venezuela. But when it comes to a constitutional republic, you cannot vote for people that will destroy it at any means or any costs necessary. You cannot do that. It's not logical, it's not reasonable, it's not in any conscience whatsoever, good or bad. You cannot fucking do that. You cannot vote for people that will do anything it takes to destroy our beloved Constitution, what is, which has been in our nation since the very beginning, just about. Dating back to the 1780s, 1770s. All those decades ago, and, and yet, you people, you liberal voters, had to make the biggest mistake of your lives by voting for a dementia-suffering, 78-year-old, just about 80-year-old Joe Biden into the 46th president of the United States. The 46th president of the United States. Because you didn't think your 45 worked, did you? Well, your 45 fucking worked for four years, but you didn't fucking see it because you stupid liberals don't give a damn about common knowledge and reason. Fuck. Ladies and gentlemen, it's like I said at the beginning of this. I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm not saying this because 
I want to be of spite to anybody. I'm saying this because it's the fucking goddamn truth. And if you, if we as a nation cannot see the truth for exactly what it is, not what we make it to be, then quite frankly, we don't deserve to have a constitution anymore. We don't deserve to have a nation anymore. Not like this. Not if we're just going to vote for any old geezer like Joe Biden who suffers from memory loss and dementia and refers to his granddaughter as a dead son of his. Look up barely a lot. Look up barely there Biden.com. I swear to God, you will find so many interesting things about him that confirm my lack of faith in him. That quite frankly, you'll laugh your ass off at just how inane he truly is. How clueless he's become. Especially over the last 12 years. Anyway. I'm going to get the hell out of here. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Spot the Liberal. YouTube might take this down. I don't know. We'll see. Good night, everybody. This is a Skull Media production. Stop it! 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 Okay, <laughs> I'm watching a bit from Kevin the Skull Anderson. It's Skull. Spot the liberal new episode live. Huh. I think that's going to be my new intro intro from now on. Pretty cool, huh? Guess what? You came to the right place. <laughs> ah! You're a fucking Alright, so let me get this straight. For the last nine months, Joe Biden couldn't fill up a high school gymnasium, but all of a sudden he has over 75 million supporters. Somebody explain to me how the hell that's possible. No, seriously, I want to know. Because I don't believe it for a minute. I'm going to tell you that now. And you shouldn't either. You know why? Because voter fraud. Because corruption. That's all the Democrats know. That's all they've done throughout their entire existence. Oh, by the way, welcome to Spot the Liberal. The election software system in Michigan that switched 6,000 votes from Trump to Biden is called, this is from Kyle Becker, by the way, Dominion. That is the election software system that has been screwing up our votes for at least 20 years. It's called Dominion. Now, in case you don't know what Dominion is, it's an electoral rigging system. It's not necessarily as much a software system as much as it does rig votes in favor of the Democrat that's running for president. <clears throat> Joe Biden. Not that that means anything, but who really gives a damn at this point? Okay, so the election software system, Dominion, is used, right now, is being used in 30 states, including Nevada, Arizona, Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia, and, wait for it, wait for it, Pennsylvania. Every single damn one of them. Every last one of them. All the swing states and about 23 other states too. If that is not the biggest case of electoral fraud in the history of the world, then quite frankly, I don't know what the hell is anymore. Because, I mean, you, you'd you have to be stupid to not believe that this is going on right under your nose. Because... Ah, who the hell am I kidding? You, you, you liberals out there will believe anything. You will believe that a dementia-suffering pedophile who can't even fill up a coffee shop is capable of president. But anyway, well, hell, I think I just pissed off a bunch of libs. Fuck it. Who cares? Let's just, let's just move on, okay? Kristen Amo Rowan from Stop the Steal. 
Have any votes been certified? No. Has any litigation reached a conclusion? No. Does the media have any authority to call an election? No. Is Joe Biden your president? Not only no, but hell no. Oh, by the way, I should mention, it's worth pointing out, and keep get used to me saying, by the way, I should mention a lot, because I'm going to say that a lot in this episode, in case you're wondering why I'm saying it right now. But here is the deal, right? This election is far from over. It's, it's not even close to being over yet, especially since Trump watermarked 14 million ballots and organized a sting operation to expose the Democrats for the frauds that they are. Moving on. Jamie Lee says, Fellow patriots, I know you're hurting, but please stop panicking right now. If this is too much for you, turn off social media and the news and get centered. All of this was known well in advance. We know why they changed voting laws and pushed for mail-in ballots. You can't tell people there's corruption. You must show them. Trump will fight and the truth will be revealed. This is psychological warfare. Do not surrender to it. You've got to have a little bit of faith. You understand? You guys have got to have a little bit of faith. Remember, I mean, there was, there was this, this guy named Al Gore who came up with this movie called An Inconvenient Truth, followed by another sequel called An Inconvenient Sequel, or whatever the hell that was. Basically, he's an advocate for climate change, or whatever this, this falsehood is that's going on right now. But he ran like 20 years ago, right? The guy lost because of something that happened 37 days after Election Day. This happened in the middle of December, close to the start of winter. By the way, doesn't everyone remember the saying that President made months ago that there would be massive voter fraud with melon ballots and a scandal of the century? Guess what, people? You don't want to believe it. You don't want to say it's true, but deep down you know and I know he's right. There was massive voter fraud with mail-in ballots. There was a scandal of the century, and it's happening right now under your noses. He knew their plan, and he prepared months and months and months and months in advance. We're talking five years, literally at the start of his presidential campaign in 2015, when he came down that elevator, right? Literally, from that moment, he knew... He was going to have an uphill battle, so he planned like five steps ahead of everybody else. Because that's how good he is as president. He's a man that thinks before he speaks, that does something when he says he's going to do it. By the way, nobody in Congress that's a Democrat ever does that. Newsweek, 1979. George Soros said at that point that he hates America and all the people living in it. Well, you know what? He's made it his mission ever since then to destroy this country, and although he thinks it's working, his old senile mind says that his mind's going to fail him one day. Newsmax, by the way, made a statement. At this time, Newsmax is not calling Joe Biden the winner. The election remains very close, and President Trump continues to context results in several states, including Pennsylvania. All votes should be counted. The media should not make the determination of the winner under these circumstances. It's common freaking sense. If you are that irresponsible and that dumb to not realize that all votes should be counted, except for the ones that are counted after Election Day, which should not be counted and rendered illegitimate and void, and if you don't realize that the media should not make the determination of the winner under any circumstances that are given in this particular situation, then you are about as much of an idiot as, say, Al Gore, the same Al Gore I mentioned earlier that ran 20 years ago. They thought he won at that point. And it took 37 days for them to finally 
render a verdict in favor of George W. Bush, who, by the way, was a very terrible president that really wasn't going to do anything anyway. He was just another Mitt Romney, another John McCain. Al Gore, and we'll never know this, could have been the potential to be another JFK, but he wasn't really elected, right? Oh, by the way, I should mention, according to Elvin Kilgore, Evan Kilgore says that Twitter is literally suspending accounts of people that share videos of legitimate, legitimate voter fraud. That's why I'm not going back to Twitter, folks, because Twitter is a shitter. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's run by a jackass horsey named Jack Dorsey. You said that right, right? I mean, you heard it, didn't you? Mm. But yeah, I'm not going back to Twitter because Twitter is a hellhole that, quite frankly, nobody should be a part of anyway. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm shocked really that that people don't just abandon Twitter and Facebook right this minute because of what Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey are doing to sell them out. Also, a complaint has been filed against the University of Pennsylvania and Biden Center for undisclosed mega donations from da -da -da -da, China. China. Of all the countries that had to donate to Joe Biden's campaign, China had to be the one to do it, right? This proves voter fraud and that China colluded with Biden in this election. That proves it. If you, if you check out the Facebook post, you will see it. You just got to look hard and long for it. Oh, the U.S. postal worker that was caught in a Canadian border with stolen balance in a car trunk, according to Breaking911.com, has been arrested for voter fraud, for tampering with election results. People, you gotta hear me out, alright? This is a big deal. You've got a dementia-suffering pedophile that has been in Washington for almost 50 years that has done nothing that has done jack shit for anybody that he supposedly works for, meaning us, the people that were stupid and naive enough to let them 47, 48 years ago. That's beside the point. The point I'm trying to make is Joe Biden is getting caught and soon enough, Amy Coney Barrett will see to it. After all, you can't put a crown on a clown and expect a king. Think back to Andrew Jackson. Think back to Herbert Hoover. Think back to FDR. Think back to Barack Obama. Think back to Nixon. Think back to Lyndon Baines Johnson. You know, LBJ, the guy that promoted this so-called great society when in reality it was the biggest mistake at that time that could have been made. And a pretty bad one at that. Not even a good one, but a bad one. I'm going to... Let me just explain something to you, okay? There's an old saying that goes, if you know you're up to no good... Don't hide. If you don't want to know that you're no good, hide. Or something like that. I don't know exactly how it goes, but anyway, we're going to keep going with this gravy train now. Let's keep it rolling. Okay, for those of you keeping score, this is not the official election tally. This is the official election tally, courtesy of Samuel Holmes. All right, so a fellow Trumper, a fellow Trumper found this on 4chan, anonymous, right? November the 5th, 2020 on a Thursday, 12, 19 p.m. or is it a.m.? But anyway, this person proves that there is election fraud going on. 
This person says, I realized how to prove ballot fraud, not just statistically, but forensically. Every piece of mail is photographed in a program called Mail Covers ever since the 2001 anthrax attacks. So we know how many ballots were mailed out to whom and when they arrived. We also know how many were mailed back. If this database were cross-referenced with ballot counts and state secretaries of state records, you would find out everything. If this database were cross-referenced, and if they fell off the back of a truck, there wouldn't be photographic records. Oh, by the way, the Trump administration, together with Rudy Giuliani, have already unveiled 20,000 fraudulent ballots in Philadelphia so far. And that's just one city. They vowed to dismember, uncover, and legally challenge all election results nationwide, beginning with Pennsylvania, beginning with Michigan, beginning with Wisconsin, until all levels of corruption have been exposed and dissolved. Expect myriad flips before January 20th. According to Rudy Giuliani, this is a concerted effort of corruption by the crooks who run the Democratic Party. And you know what? To be quite honest with you, I believe him. I should know. You know? I mean, seriously. But, I mean, in all seriousness, you've got to imagine. Imagine being so hopelessly dumb that you think the guy in office for four years is the problem and the guy... 47 years it's been in office is the solution. I mean, can you imagine how hopeless someone would have to be to be that stupid? I'm sorry. I just don't, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Trump has been in office for four years, never held an electoral position in his life prior to his run in 2015 and 16, and he's done a better job than all these crooks in Washington put together. It's, it's really sad. It's really sad. And it is just absolutely frustrating to me. And I really don't understand. I really don't understand why it's had to come to this. By the way, by the way, I should mention, all of you who are panic buying, you better make sure you stock up on your condoms so you don't breed anymore, you freaking idiots. I'm serious. And I'm talking to you, Democrats who voted for Biden. I'm talking to you. Because you knew what was going on. You did nothing about it. We, the Republican Party, had to do it for you. The Republican voters who voted for Trump, we had to do that for you. So let's get that right, huh? I mean, seriously. You gotta, you gotta be dumb to think that a man who can't even fill up a coffee shop can beat a guy who fills and sells out arenas full of people in seconds. I'm sorry, you just, you can't buy that. You cannot in hell buy that. There is absolutely no way. I'm sorry. It's absolute bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. This is, I mean, by the way, this is why we have condoms. This is why we have condoms. To prevent people from being born and brainwashed so badly that they vote for a Democrat, any Democrat for that matter, because all of them are corrupt, every last one of them, and I think you know it, and I know that I know it. I should also mention, there is no democracy anymore, it's an idiocracy now. See, we voters don't have a say unless we gather in great numbers to turn the tide for the greater good. That's why, when sh like this happens, we call as we see it and pray to God that the Supreme Court agrees with us. If they don't agree with us this time, however, then America will become a dictatorship led by a bunch of elderly morons who, instead of telling us what we need to know, will always lie to us and tell us what they think we need to know. Think back to Stalin, Hitler, Obama, Vlad the Impaler, North Korea, Maduro, Andrew Jackson. Socialism has been experimented in this nation at least twice, and in each scenario the end result was people lining up to pay an arm and a leg for bread. Not very good, is it? Now, if Biden and the Democrats get away with it this time, like they did in 2008, 2012, and 2016, then we'll all end up like Venezuela, 
who, by the way, its citizens are all eating out of expired food from trash bags. So it's time to fight for our future, it's time to risk our lives for our future, it's time to awaken and work for our future, because money doesn't grow on trees, there's no such thing as free money. And if those things are done, we can reclaim our future. That's the only way it's going to happen. If we work hard for it, if we awaken to the truth for what it really is, and if we fight for our future and risk our lives for it and lay down our lives for it, will be the heroes of history. Remember, this isn't just this country we're talking about. We're talking about the whole damn world. So just keep that in mind. Also, from the Trump-Pence campaign, an official statement from President Donald John Trump, November 7th, 2020. We all know why Joe Biden is rushing to falsely pose as the winner and why his media allies are trying so hard to help him. They don't want the truth to be exposed. The simple fact is this election is far from over. Joe Biden has not been certified as the winner of any states, let alone any of the highly contested states headed for mandatory recounts or states where our campaign has valid and legitimate legal challenges that could determine the ultimate winner. In Pennsylvania, for example, in Pennsylvania, legal observers were not permitted meaningful access to watch the counting process. Legal votes decide who is president, not the news media. He also goes on to say, he goes on to say, beginning Monday, our campaign will start prosecuting our case in court to ensure election laws are fully upheld and the rightful winner is seated. The American people are entitled to an honest election. That means counting all legal ballots and not counting any illegal ballots. This is the only way to ensure the public has full confidence in our election. It remains shocking that the Biden campaign refuses to agree with this basic principle and wants ballots counted even if they are fraudulent, manufactured, or cast by illegal or deceased voters. Only a party engaged in wrongdoing would unlawfully keep observers out of the courtroom and then fight in court to block their access. So what is Biden hiding? What is he hiding? I will not rest until the American people have the honest vote count they deserve and that democracy demands. I should also point out, Jim Johnson says, and this is fact, that Trump won in a landslide. It's a massive voter fraud case throughout the country which will be filed 9 a.m. Monday morning in federal court. Thank Christ we have a constitution and thousands of hours of video of voter fraud video and testimony from over a hundred witnesses and this is just in Pennsylvania the ground zero of the profession voter fraud machine and also the birthplace of this country has been many of those are lawyers it's just Trump doesn't mess around neither do his followers and you know what the media doesn't remember that they think we're stupid they think we're retarded you remember you remember when the media said that we all were right, retarded? All right, now, here's the when deal, the FBI right? said that we were retarded? You remember that? They also I'm not think a Biden they are now in control of the election over all. the court system. I can call I hate elections. The guy. He is corrupt. He's a liar. He's a cheat. He's a stealer. He suffers from dementia and, in my honest opinion, is a pedophile and has done nothing. He's done nothing to improve anything in almost 50 years as a politician. I believe that Joe Biden is the stepping stone for Kamala Harris to take over the White House and that Nancy Pelosi is already trying to put a 25th Amendment in place to remove an unfit president. I don't think that has a thing to do with Trump having COVID. I think that's to remove Biden if elected for dementia and Harris to take over. This is my opinion, so don't bother to bash it. I haven't bashed yours. Now listen carefully, because you're going you're gonna to want to listen to this. And just stick with me for the next nine minutes. Just bear with me. The clown in the White House just brokered 
two Middle East peace accords, something that over seven decades of political intervention and endless war constantly and irreversibly failed to produce. The clown in the White House is the first president that has not engaged us in a foreign war since Dwight D. Eisenhower. The clown in the White House has had the greatest impact on the economy, bringing jobs and lowering unemployment to the black and Latino population of any other president in American history ever. Ever! Think about that when you consider the results, okay? Because, I mean, seriously though, you, you got to hear me out when I say this, okay? Listen up. The buffoon in the White House has exposed the deep, widespread, and long-standing corruption in the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Central Ignorance Agency, the National Security Administration, and the Republican and Democratic parties. The buffoon in the White House turned NATO around the North American Treaty Organization, as I think it is, and had them start paying their dues. The clown in the White House neutralized the North Koreans, stopped them from developing a further nuclear capability, sending missiles towards Japan, and threatening the west coast of the United States of America. Now, if that weren't crazy enough, if that weren't crazy enough, it gets crazier from here. This is, this is just part of what he's accomplished. He's turned our relationship with the Chinese around, brought hundreds if not thousands of businesses back to the United States, and practically revived the economy. Wake up! You guys need to listen. The clown in the White House has accomplished the appointing of three Supreme Court justices and close to 300 federal judges. This same clown in the White House lowered your taxes, increased the standard deduction on your IRS return from $12,500 for marriage filing joint to $24,500 and caused your stock market to move to record levels over a hundred times, positively impacting the retirements of tens of millions of citizens. If that weren't crazy enough, the clown in the White House fast-tracked the development of a COVID vaccine, which will be available within a matter of weeks. We're still far from having a vaccine for SARS, bird flu, Ebola, or a host of other diseases that arose during previous administrations. The clown in the White House rebuild our military, which the Obama administration had crippled and had fired 214 key generals and admirals in his first year of office. The clown in the White House uncovered widespread pedophilia in the government and in Hollywood, and as we speak right now, is exposing worldwide sex trafficking of minors and bringing children home to their families. Here's what else he's accomplished. Listen to this one. Listen to this one. The clown in the White House works for free and has lost well over $2 billion of his own money, his own money, in serving, and done all of this and much more in the face of relentless undermining and opposition from people who are threatened because they know they are going to be exposed as the criminals that they are if he is reelected. Now, I understand that you don't like him, I get it, Many of you utterly despise and hate the man. How special are you? He is serving you and working for you and all the American people. What are you jackasses doing besides calling him names and laughing about him catching the damn China virus? And please educate me again as to what Biden has accomplished for America in his nearly 50 years of office. Tell me. Because I, I really want to know. Because I, I guarantee you, you can't name one thing. Oh, by the way, by the way, 
I'll take a clown any day versus a fork-tongued, smooth-talking, hypocritical, corrupt liar. Please let it be known, I am not sure I would want to have a beer with him or a soda or a coffee if he drank any of those or even be his friend. I don't give a damn if I don't like him. I want a strong leader who isn't afraid to kick some ass and take some names when needed. I don't need a fatherly figure, I already have one. I don't need a liar, that's what Hollywood and CNN, MSNBC, ABC, NBC, and CBS and the New York Times are for. I don't need someone to help me, but I don't want an obstacle or dimension suffering, senile, pedophilic driven, washed up swamp monster. God bless President Donald John Trump Jr., the most unappreciated president of all time. From Kevin Olson. He says, Long story, underground news or whatever, but Trump got rid of election agency and turned it over to Homeland Security. They watermarked secretly 14 million ballots. Now found then all Biden ballots. They have been caught and soon it will hit the fan. He said Trump has won. Now Kevin Olson's kid is all about conspiracies, but his kid is confident. Even a child knows that this is voter fraud. Even a fucking child knows that this is voter fraud. And here's, here's the interesting part, right? Here's the interesting part. Here's what's so funny to me about all this. You have at least 70 million dumbasses that voted for this ignorant old fuck. That's the sad part. Oh, by the way, if anyone tells me I have to wear a mask in public... This is a legal notice of my religious immunity for a mandatory face mask covering policy or mandate attempting to be imposed upon me at your place of public accommodation. Per Title II of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, passed on Tuesday, the 7th day of January, 1964. All persons shall be entitled to be free at any establishment or place from discrimination or segregation of any kind on the ground of race, color, religion, or national origin if such administration or segregation is on purpose to be required by any law, statute, ordinance, regulation, rule, or order of a state or any agency or political subdivision thereof. Right? Right. Also see section 203 of the same thing. By the way, Michigan, Michigan has more votes than people registered. Huh, I wonder what that means. Does that mean there is voter fraud? You're damn right that's what it means. It means there's voter fraud going on there and you know it. And you wonder why Joe Biden is this close, this close to stealing the presidency of the United States. And by the way, if he's going to be elected president, he's going to turn the presidency into a laughing stock. I just know it because that's exactly what these Democrats do. That's exactly what these fucks do. They make the government look like the laughing stock of the world, the American government is the laughing stock of the world now, and you wonder why I always vote straight Republican and have for the last four years. I'm going to conclude following that Roy Cooper is a non-essential worker. He Actually, he's not a worker at all. It's more like he's, how you say, a shill for socialism. And with that said, I thank you all for watching this episode of Spot the Liberal. There's going to be another episode to come, folks. Season 6 finale is coming soon, so till then, you better stay tuned. See you on social media. Bye. This is a Skull Media production. Of the week. Nothing. You 
Because Shep Smith is always the fag of the week here at Spot the Liberal. Eh. I think I just pissed off a bunch of Democrats across the board. I don't care. Hi, everybody. How are you? Scully the Sanderson here. Say, I have a question. Do you hate scumbag politicians? Do you hate scum lords? And do you hate googly eyed fuckers like Adam Full of Schiff, Elizabeth Shitting Bull Wong, Eli Spamflex Cummings, Maisie Sabja Corona, Jerry Rat Shit Brown, Jed the Fig Flake, Barack Lecoq Satoro, Joe Who Biden, or in general, any chalk ass that believes in Andrew Jackson. If you do, then guess what? You came to the right place. This is a CBS News special report. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another edition of Spot the Liberal. I'm Kevin the Skull Anderson. And I'm going to tell you exactly like it is. Which is something that most people in the mainstream media would never do. Because they're all liberals. Of course they are. Duh. Alright. According to one of my Facebook friends. The New York Times is reporting that John Bolton's unpublished book says that Matt Cipollone, the president's lead attorney in the impeachment trial, was at the meeting in which President Donald Trump asked Bolton to help with his effort to pressure Ukraine into helping him dig up dirt on his political rivals. This raises ethical questions and House impeachment managers have demanded that Cipollone disclose any first-hand evidence. If true, the State Bar will investigate, and he can be disbarred for not disclosing he had first-hand knowledge. Also, John Bolton can be subpoenaed still to testify in the House. So I say to you now, the New York Times has been, still is, and always will be full of absolute bullcrap because they are full of complete bullshit. Do you understand? Do you can understand? It's not that difficult, people. It's not that difficult. Not that difficult to figure out. Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, you're never going to believe this. You're never going to believe this. You're never going to believe this. I've got some shocking, 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 very shocking statistics for you that I think will really make your head roll. Now listen to this. What I'm going to read to you, the following, are all facts. Number one, 43% of all food stamps recipients are illegal immigrants. Number two, 95% of warrants issued for murder in Los Angeles are for illegal immigrants. Number three, less than 2% of all illegal immigrants are picking crops but 41% of all illegal immigrants are on welfare. Number four, more than 66% of all births in California's district are to illegals on Medi-Cal. You can thank Gavin Newsom for that because he's a complete douchebag and I think you guys know it too. I wouldn't kiss his ass. Number freaking six. You're never going to believe this. Four out of ten California students are illegal immigrants. 
If that's not shocking enough, we have number seven. 75%, three quarters of all Los Angeles most wanted criminals are illegal immigrants. Three out of every four of them. Number eight, half of all gang members are illegal immigrants. And finally, number nine, U.S. taxpayers, you and I, you and I and everyone that you know that's a taxpayer are currently footing the bill for all. Let me give you some more of that stuff, right? Let me tell you. Let me explain something to you. Joe Biden is a fraud. He's a fraud. The only reason why he's running for president is because he was the vice president for eight years and failed to do a single thing about Barack Obama's atrocities across this country. Imagine that sh right? And then he wants to say, well, Trump says up is down, wrong is right, choose, no, it's not. Up is up, down is down, wrong is wrong, right is right, truth is truth, a falsehood is a falsehood. What kind of crack have you been smoking, Joe Biden? Huh? Huh? Cause I'd like to be on the crack that you're on. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't. Let me let me explain something to you, okay? I know I've said it before, but I'm gonna say it again. Democracy in this country is dead. It does not exist anymore. And deep down, every single one of you know it. You just never care to let it on, do you? That's why I'm here. To tell you the God's honest truth in whatever way I need to. Because God only knows these truths are self-evident and pretty much explain themselves. And they speak for themselves too. Brexit. The most pointless masochistic ambition in United Kingdom history is done yet we don't know how it's gonna turn out nobody knows how it's going to turn out and you know why because it just got started yesterday Saturday February the 1st and I'm recording this on Sunday February the 2nd the year 2020 now get this you're not gonna believe me but there are fairy tale like horses currently roaming around the landscape of Iceland a little bit of unrelated news for you but who gives a damn at this point? Nobody. Right? Because what you're interested about is the truth. And the truth is... Fox just made a terrible decision! They're gonna show an abortion survivor's... Well, actually, you know what? They're not gonna show that. Because they would rather okay a drag queen commercial! What? What are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? Th this is... Fox, what are you thinking? This is why the mouse killed you! And I mean the house of mouse, because Walt Disney bought Fox a year ago and has already taken the Fox 
out of 20th Century Fox. Imagine that, right? How is this even remotely okay? And who want who among you would like to bet that John Bolton is the whistleblower behind this impeachment farce that quite frankly should have never happened and the reason why it should have never happened is because John Bolton the former national security advisor is guilty of high treason do you not get it John Bolton is a treasonist he used his position as national security advisor to side with Democrats in a partisan effort, a partisan effort. The most partisan effort and the most failed one also in the history of any nation on the planet to impeach a nation's president or prime minister for something that said president or prime minister never did but the accusers are actually guilty of let me get some coffee real quick some freaking toffee you want to know what else is funny John Bolton is secretly making this up. And you know what? You know what? He's probably not the only whistleblower. You know who the other whistleblower is? Eric Carmella! Eric Carmella and John Bolton are the whistleblowers behind this farce of an impeachment trial. Do you get it now? Do you get it? It's just so funny. It's it's so funny to me, people. It's it's really it's really really funny because how is it that the president does everything right to help the people of this country get to where they need to get in life? without having to suffer all these financial setbacks and meanwhile the Democratic Party is the party of illegal immigrants, the party of crime, the party of racism, the party of the Ku Klux Klan the Democrats created the Ku Klux Klan they did yes they did Gonna look at my phone here real quick. Monica Vrana just made a perfect, perfect, perfect meme. You're never gonna believe this. Look at this. Look at this! Look! Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are the two biggest lying scumbags in the history of politics we the people agree impeach Pelosi and Schumer for acts of treason there I just converted backwards text to English for you in other words backwards text is a fancier way of saying Zatanna's language which is backwards not that anybody cares but yeah let's just move on I'm gonna explain this to you okay keep in mind I'm just browsing through my phone reading off stories verbatim as they need to be read
you know? I mean, people... People... It's not that difficult. There's an elected official. His name is Eddie. I'm not going to tell you his last name because you probably already know it by now if you live where I live. Eddie says... 50 million gunless people were murdered over a 30 year time span. 50 million people who had no arms to protect themselves because they thought it was okay to give it to the government. The government killed them! Over three decades! 50 million people wrongfully killed for no reason by the governments of socialist, Marxist, fascist, communist, democratic nations because they thought turning their guns in to the government would be the best thing for them. But it also turned out to be the last thing that they ever did. Gun Control Hall of Fame! They had a choice not to give up their guns and fight to live. But what did they do? They were dumb and numb and naive and retarded. So they chose to give up their guns. And they got killed for it. They all got killed for it. You know why? I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you this. Every single year. And this is a populate. We are a human race. A population of 7.7 .7 billion people. 56 million people are murdered every year. Because they choose. To murder. They're unborn babies that have no way of preventing nor fighting for their own life nor defending themselves in any way. Planned Parenthood is the reason behind this and you all know it. The reason why 56 million unborn lives are taken is because of Planned Parenthood. Do you get it now? Do you understand? And you wonder why the people in Planned Parenthood and the Democratic Party worship people like, oh, oh, I don't know, Joseph Stalin, Paul Pot, Adolf Hitler, Mao Zedong. And you can add people like Nancy Pelosi, like Chuck Schumer, like Bernie Sanders, like anyone competing in the Democratic primary to face Donald Trump, which no matter who wins, they're still going to lose because Donald Trump is going to get reelected again to a second term because there's simply nobody in that field that can even come close. You can add people like that to the list because they are morons and they don't deserve a single ounce of responsibility because they are irresponsibly stupid and inexcusably corrupt at that. There's a verse in the Bible, Romans 12, 2, posted on Facebook by a fellow Christian friend of mine, Chris Hoffman. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, perfect, and pleasing will. 
and by pleasing I mean pleasing. Do you get it? I forgot to pronounce the A in there. The world is a sh hole, okay? That's basically what the Bible's trying to tell you. The world is a sh hole and it was designed to fail. At some point. It wasn't designed to fail immediately. Otherwise, we would never exist. Our predecessors would never exist. And their predecessors and their predecessors and their predecessors and their predecessors would never exist. You understand, people? It is really not that difficult to see. It is not that easy to comprehend, but it's not that hard either. It is really simple, people. This is why we should have voter ID in every single United States. This is why, people! This is why. You got illegal immigrants killing natural born citizens. You've got Planned Parenthood killing unborn babies. You got dictators all over the world killing their own people that elected them simply because they wanted their citizens to turn in the guns to the dictators, to the politicians. You wonder why politicians are the lowest form of life? This explains why. This explains why. And deep down you know it, and deep down I know it, and deep down it is a fact proven over time! February 4th is Donald J. Trump's historic State of the Union address. And depending on when I upload this episode, that may have already happened. Punks to Tony Phil predicts an early spring on Groundhog Day. On Groundhog Day. As if we haven't had an early spring as it is! 2020, the year that winter forgot! At least in my area. I don't know what it's like in your area. It may have already snowed a few inches in your area, but it definitely hasn't snowed an inch in mine. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. We are supposed to be the richest nation on the planet. We are supposed to have the best educational system on the planet. So we have all this money, right? We have all this money. And yet... Yet... Joe Biden never told Barack Obama how to fix America, even though he claims to have known the whole time. This is why Joe Biden will never become President of the United States. Because Joe Biden is a lying scumbag! Do you not get it? I was in deep in shit right now. I just know it. MAGA. Mars got acquitted! Meaning Trump. Because you know he's going to be exonerated. You know he's going to be acquitted of the crimes. He did not acquit. That he not, he did not commit. Excuse me. I cannot speak straight today. You know damn well. And I know damn well. 
that Donald John Trump is being accused of not doing what Adam Schiff and the entire Democratic Party actually did. Keep in mind, their boss is George Soros. Your boss and my boss is Donald John Trump. Imagine that, right? Yeah. Let me tell you something, people. Let me tell you something. I'm going to go with one more story. And then I'm going to get the hell out of here. As soon as I can find it. Colin Powell is an idiot. He says that Donald Trump turned America from we the people to me the president. Meanwhile, what did Colin Powell do during Obama's reign as King Negro? Nothing! He did nothing! He's a loser! End of story! And that concludes this episode of Spot the Liberal. I've been yours truly, Kevin the Skull Anderson. Please feel free to follow me on Facebook. Please feel free to follow me on Instagram and LinkedIn and all the other sites that I'm on. I'm pretty sure you know what they are. I have a DeviantArt page that will link you to my web pages that will link you to my social media channels join the skull nation today again this has been yours truly Kevin the Skull Anderson wishing you a very happy Groundhog Day and if this video doesn't get uploaded by the 14th a very happy Valentine's Day so long Ladies and gentlemen, before I begin this episode of Spot the Liberal, I would like to acknowledge the recent passing of longtime Jeopardy host George Alexander Trebek. The Canadian born game show personality was active in the business for almost 60 years. My condolences go out to him, his family, and all the Jeopardy staff, crew, and fans. Thank you. Also, to hell with Roy Cooper. He's a jackass. Stop it. 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 You came to the right place. Ladies and gentlemen. What the hell is going on? I am Kevin the Skull Anderson. It is a great honor to be on your computer screen or your tablet or your smartphone device or your smart TV. I've got a lot to get off my chest again because of this whole 2020 election bull crap. You know, Ronald Reagan said that freedom is never more than one generation away from becoming extinct. Well, you know what? Even though he's been dead about 16 years, he's right. Not only did we not pass this freedom to our children in the bloodstream, but we've got to fight for it, we've got to protect it, we've got to hand it on to the future generations for them to do the same, or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our grandchildren what it was once like in the United States when men and women were free. I mean, at this point, it's really just common sense. You not only have to fight for your freedom, but you've got to protect it, 
and trust that the generation that you pass it to that comes after you will do the same. I mean, freedom is not free. Freedom comes at a cost. Oh, by the way, you know Judge Clarence Thomas? His reputation was nearly destroyed by Senator Joe Biden in 1991. And guess what happened? He was eventually confirmed to the United States Supreme Court. He's now firmly in control of the SCOTUS majority and is now the de facto Chief Justice. Unlike John Roberts, who can't really say the same thing right now, even though technically he is the leader of the Supreme Court, but he's a Democrat, obviously, so nothing he says is going to make any sense. But we're talking about Clarence Thomas here, not that scumbag Justice John Roberts. See, Clarence Thomas is going to be the guy that chooses the fate of the 2020 election, as is Amy Coney Barrett, as is Brett Kavanaugh, and so on and so forth. Remember, they got a 6-3 lead in the SCOTUS in favor of the conservatives. You know, it's a 6-3. There are double the number of Republicans than there are Democrats in the Supreme Court, and there's nine of them altogether. Imagine that. Now, if that weren't crazy enough, the same man that Joe Biden did everything in his power to destroy is now going to be his judge, his jury, and his executioner. Imagine the fucking irony of that. Imagine the irony of that. It's insane, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Oh, by the way, you know how Fox called Arizona way too early? Well, I'm going to tell you like it is. Fox News is dead. Cause of death? Easy. It got run over by Joe Biden and the rest of the corporate left. See... Fox News has become what they swore not to become. You know what they've become? They've become the crap news network. You know CNN? A bunch of corporate Nazi nitwits? That's all they are. Anyway, Fox News originally called the race for Joe Biden which was absolute bullcrap considering the massive electoral fraud that had been going on and the massive voter fraud as well. Hmm. I wonder where you get that idea from, huh? CNN? MSNBC? Bloomberg? Fox News, you need to get your shit together. Because you're going out in a blaze of gory if you don't. And I'm telling you now, Fox News... You really need to just grow a pair of nuts and accept the fact that there was voter fraud in this election. And that's that. Now, if I don't get to explain why I think this way, then I'll never get to explain. See, I've watched Fox News for years. They've had liberal buffoons like Shep Smith and Juan Williams on there. And, and now suddenly they're just full of them. I'm surprised, personally, that Brett Baer and Judge Jeanine Pirro and Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity don't just move ship to Newsmax. I'm shocked. Oh, by the way, LawEnforcementToday.com has reported... We are all targets in what is currently still ongoing the greatest psychological operation America will ever, ever see. Ever. 
And I'm telling you, when I say we're the target, I don't just say it to say it. I say it because it's true. Ladies and gentlemen, the media likes to tug at our heartstrings. They like to tug at our emotions. They think we're stupid. Guess what? We're not. We can still fight the media. We can still fight big tech. You know, Silicon Valley. Yeah, we can still fight them and we can win this. Because we're not going to let a 78-year-old, demented, pants-shitting pedophile into the White House, given all the stuff, all the things that have just recently been revealed to us, the people. See, we the people can't stand for this. We the people cannot stand for this. You know why? Because this has been going on since at least the year 2000, and there I say probably a lot longer than that. You know, voter fraud goes back at least 150 years, all the way to the 1870s, when Florida was probably at the heart of this electoral dispute between two candidates for president at that time. And you know something? Florida is still a controversial topic in electoral seasons, especially like in 2020 and 2016 and 2012 and 2008 and 2004 and 2000 and 1990. You know, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Florida has had a history of voter fraud, and quite frankly, we the people are pissed off. See... To so all those who voted Republican, it's like I said, it's greatly appreciated. I'm glad that you agreed with me that Donald Trump should still be our president for the next four years. But to all those people that voted Democrat, do you people have any idea how fucked and stupid you are for having believed in the lies of a liberal corporatist left? Do you have any idea at all? No, you don't. No, you don't. And here's why. If you're willing to vote someone who raped a woman for Monica Lewin named Monica Lewinsky twice, elected a scumbag whose father declared a new world order 200 some years too late, and then you want to elect twice an illegal immigrant who got away with voter fraud and was successfully successful in the election of himself and his so-called boyfriend, da, 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 Joe Biden. Joe the plum dumb quid bowl crow Joe Biden. And you know something? It's, it's almost as if the dumb rule our planet now. This planet is run by freaking idiots because most people don't even stand up for themselves anymore. Men in this country have to be told how to be by women. By women. That's fucking pathetic, is it not? I mean, you look at all the stuff that's on the news every single day. Look at it. Just look. I guess you can tell that Men are no longer the superior, dominant gender anymore. Or at least not anyway. But they will be soon. Look. In Wisconsin, 140,000 mail-in ballots were found. Guess what those 140,000 mail-in ballots were for? Joe Biden. Between 3.30 and 5 in the morning that same day, the same people found 200,000 mail-in ballots in Michigan, all for Joe Biden. There were like a million, a million mail-in ballots in one other state. I think it could be Pennsylvania, I'm not entirely sure. But they were all for Biden, too. 
that, and I'm not even a genius or anything. I'm not an expert. I'm not a professor. I don't even want to be a professor. I just want to be like you. I want to be, how you say, normal, except I'm never going to be normal. But the fact is, even a dumbass retard like me knows that's statistically and factually impossible. Not to mention forensically in any other kind of way. You remember when the FBI called us retarded, guys? Do you remember that? You should remember that, because that's what the FBI said we were. And they were never going to do anything to Hillary Clinton. They're not going to do anything to Joe Biden either, not unless we have a say in it. Oh, by the way, there is this software. This software named Hammer, right? Get this. Democrats used a classified supercomputer called Hammer to deliberately and intentionally steal the 2020 election. Just like they did in 2016, or tried to, before Donald Trump was elected our 45th president. Just like they did in 2008 and 2012, when Joe Biden and that scumbag that's not even all the way black, but that scumbag, that literal piece of shit in Barack Obama run for president, right? Oh, by the way, do you remember when Amy Cohen Barrett was put on the SCOTUS? That happened a few weeks ago. The Democrats were scared of that happening. They didn't want that to happen. You know why? Because they were involved in the 2000 court case over the election as part of the Bush legal team. You know, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, I think they were the ones. Hell if I know. But let me explain some to you, okay? Amy Coney Barrett was involved in the 2000 court case over the election as part of Bush's legal team. And you know, it's so funny I bring that up, Bush winning the 2000 election. Because for 37 days, Al Gore did what Joe Biden is doing right now. Parading around the streets saying, Hey, look guys, I stole the election! I won! And you can't do a damn thing about it! Meanwhile, on the 38th day, George W. Bush was declared the winner, not Al Gore. So that was kind of embarrassing, right? Talk about premature celebration, right? Oh, get this, get this. You know, you've got all these states, right? All these states on election night. And pretty much all of them saw Donald Trump beating Joe Biden by at least, at least 5 to 10 points, percentage-wise. That's funny, isn't it? And, and then all the fake ballots came in. The fake ballots came in. And they, they were all for Joe Biden. And you know what? To all you stupid jackass liberals out there... I'll let you have your fun. But don't you come knocking down my doorstep and trying to kill me when Donald Trump has declared the winner by disqualification because that's what's going to happen. Joe Biden isn't going to get away with his voter fraud and you know it and you're falling for it. You're falling for his bullshit every day just like you fell for Obama's bullshit. You fell for McCain's bullshit. You fell for Al Gore's bullshit. You fell for Bill Clinton's bullshit. You fell for Andrew Jackson's bullshit. And his bullshit probably stank the worst of all of them. Let me tell you something, okay? Let me tell you something. You guys want to celebrate all the time thinking that you've successfully killed America by voting for a senile old fuck. Well, let me tell you something. Projected and elected. 
are two completely different words, which mean two completely different things. Projected means the media says it. Elected says we said it. That's a huge damn difference, isn't it? Projected means the media said it versus elected means we said it. What do you believe? Do you think Joe Biden's projected? Or is Donald Trump elected to win? I think it's the latter, don't you? You damn fucking right it is. You know, if we didn't have 60 million stupid fucking idiots roaming this country unpunished, unfettered, we'd be in a lot better shape right now. That's not to say I'd rather these 60 million Democrat voters not exist. I'm just saying, like Judge Judy said, parents should take an IQ test before they're allowed to procreate and have kids. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. And because most people don't listen to that prophetic statement, because most people don't listen to that statement, that very statement that Judge Judith Scheinland predicted, that parents would have to have themselves tested before having kids, that says a lot. You know, I look back on Revelation 13, right? Kind of reminds me of Daniel 6 and 7. You know, the beast, the fourth beast, they say it's coming. I'd like to think that it's coming. It might not come in my lifetime, though. It might not come in my lifetime. It may come in yours, but sure not mine. Because I don't expect myself to live much longer. I really don't. Because this world, I don't know how the hell this world can get any worse than it already is. Because, you know, this beast was like a leopard. His feet were like a bear's. His mouth was like a lion's. And there was a dragon that gave him his power. You know the dragon is Satan, right? And his seat and great authority. And, you know, there was one of these heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the satanic dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make more with him? Or war with him? Oh, by the way, it goes without saying, we're living in godless times, ladies and gentlemen. People don't have morals anymore. It's sad. It's stupid. It's fucking stupid. You know, there was someone on Facebook who posted this photograph of a woman, if I'm not mistaken, carrying a sign that says, and I quote, If a dog can be put to sleep for attacking children, then so should all pedophiles! Hashtag save our children. Hashtag end human trafficking. You gotta end human trafficking. And you know, Donald Trump's doing a damn good job of doing that. He's exposed Hollywood for the pedophiles they are. He's exposing all these, sac these sex trafficking rings all over the world. He's exposing them. And yet you want to give the credit to Joe Biden. You want to give the credit to Joe Biden because you're too stupid to realize that Donald Trump is the one you should be giving the credit to. You fucking idiots. Let me tell you something. Anyone that commits treason in this country should be dead. I'm sorry, they should be dead. They shouldn't be roaming around in Congress, parading themselves around and whoring themselves, planning their next attack on us, the people. You know? Wake up, you sleeping giants! You're being attacked by the Lilliputians! 
I'm just saying. Okay, so here we go. I do not understand why any group of people any group of people I don't understand why anyone would want to unify with a bunch of hateful people in Congress in the deep state in Hollywood in academia who called people like us racist sexist misogynist chump Deplorable, retarded, sellout, Nazi, Trumptard, transphobe, xenophobe, Islamophobe. You know, that statement that Hillary made. Half of all people who vote for Trump are what I'd like to call a basket of deplorables. You remember that fucking shit, huh? You're damn right you should, because she's the one that said it to you. The people of this country of the United States of America. She said that to your faces. She said that to mine, and I didn't take it lying down. You know what I did? I voted for Donald Trump. Just like I did this year, and I'm going to vote straight Republican in four years. And you know why? Because Republicans, like them or not, hate them or love them, they will always be, unless they sell out to the corporate machine, on the right side of history. And you know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. They know it. We know it. Why not accept it? It's fact. Democrats will always be on the wrong side of history, and you know that. Now. Now. Tell me what's good, huh? Tell me what's good. Because I want to know right now, in what universe, in what universe would 60 million Americans vote for a man whose entire Democratic Party and all their subdivisions and the media and Hollywood and academia deem people like you and I as retarded? The FBI said we were retarded. James Comey said that we were retarded. You remember that? Just because we voted for a man of common sense in Donald Trump. A man of common sense in Donald Trump. You mean to tell me we're retarded for voting for a businessman who's done more for this country than any other president put together in American history? What the fuck is this world coming to? I don't get it. I don't get it. It's like George Carlin once said. It's like he said. You know, George Carlin once said, We laugh too little, we drive too fast, we get too angry, we stay up too late, we get up too tired, we read too little, we watch TV too much, we multiply our possessions, we reduce our values, we talk too much, we love too seldom, and we hate too often. And as a matter of fact, you know what he said about that? He was right about that. He went on to say in a stand-up show, this comedian, George Carlin, that we've learned how to make a living, but not a life. We've added years to life, not life to years. I want you, for just a moment, to let that sink in. Just let it sink in for a moment, okay? I'll let it sink in with you. Okay, you done? Okay, good. You know, Dakota... Vinatieri Williams' photos was recently updated on Facebook. You know what she found? As of Sunday, November 8th, 2020, the states of Arizona, Nevada, all the swing states, all the swing states, 
all the swing states, excluding North Carolina, of course, have been taken away from Joe Biden. Taken away from Joe Biden. He had 290 electoral votes. You know what he has now? 226 to Trump's 232. So you tell me who's winning, huh? Donald Trump is winning. You're damn right he's winning. And he's going to win Alaska, too. In Nevada. Thousands of mail-in ballots to count. 68,000 provisional ballots. Illegal votes. Attorney General Barr involved. Arizona is going to likely have a recount. In Wisconsin, there were many irregularities, irregularities, I mean, recount. Voter turnout that was initially proposed was a statistical impossibility. You're damn right there's going to be a recount. You know why? Because election fraud. In Michigan... Software manipulation. Because of a glitch, 14,000 people who died suddenly rose from the fucking grave to vote. That's not possible in this lifetime. Not yet. You wait 20 years, though. That'll be possible. In Pennsylvania. 80,000 melon, 105,000 provisional ballots outstanding, observers were blocked, awaiting military ballots, statistically impossible voter turnout, just like in Michigan, just like in Wisconsin, just like in Arizona. In Georgia, there's going to be a recount because of illegal ballot harvesting. You know, it's so funny to me. You know, it's it's really, really funny to me. You got people in all these states who say that their vote counted because they voted. Meanwhile, they didn't do the smart thing and stick around to watch the people count their votes. If they did that, we would not be having this problem right now. You know... What would what would have happened to ensure that we didn't have this problem? Voter ID. Thank you tonight. This is a Skull Media production. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, paper money is the root of all evil. <laughs> I sure do love pissing off those liberals. Anyway, just thought I'd close with that. Have a good one, guys. Good game. The Lord's a Marine King. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a good one for you on Spot Stop the Liberal it. today. So... The Trump-Biden election chaos continues. The media wants you to think it's over. Guess what? It ain't over yet. Because all those falsified votes that were tallied, they were tallied right after the election. Which is why, if you people that fall for this stuff, keep falling for this stuff, you'll grow up to be a freaking news reporter. You understand? I mean, it is really, really not that difficult to understand. I mean, that's all the media does. That's all the mainstream media does. They lie, they cheat, they steal. All right, here we go. Guess what? You came to the right place. <laughs> ah! You're a fucking... Ah! Okay.
Now, Tony Benn once said, I don't think people realize how the establishment became established. It simply stole the land and property off the poor, surrounded themselves with weak-minded psychopaths for protection, gave themselves titles, and have been wielding power ever since. And you know what? He's absolutely correct. Tony Benn hit the nail right on the head, and he explains to us through this statement how the establishment works. They're power-hungry attention whores who do nothing but obstruct their power and abuse their power whenever and however and wherever they damn well choose. And this has been going on for decades. You understand, people? This has been going on for so many years and quite a few decades that, quite frankly, you might even say it looks like the freaking Titanic. You understand? Now, the ship in question, as you might notice, are the Democrats thinking they've won. Meanwhile, the iceberg is not even... 300 yards in front of them and they're heading right for it and they're all going to sink right to the bottom of the ocean and you know what the funny part of it is the funny part of it is they're going to be so far down the ocean that you won't be able to see them that's how far down they're going to be and by that point not even not even God could be able to pluck them out Okay, maybe I'm just exaggerating a little bit. But the Supreme Court is the Supreme Court for a reason. To make sure that people like this don't get into our White House. Do you understand? You know Joe Biden, the drag queen? Yeah, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny oh my god it's good to make fun of Joe Biden a 48 year veteran of politics which means he has a D next to his name which means he's a dumbass <laughs> you get it now <laughs> I guess the D in Democrat stands for dumbass because, simply put, Democrats are a bunch of sissies. They're a bunch of pussies. They don't freaking think before they speak. And you know, all this is going to go up in smoke. Just like everything the Democrats try to do, it's all going to go up in smoke. And it's so funny to me, and I'd love to think... I would love to think the Democrats are this force to be reckoned with that nobody can touch them and nobody can hurt them and nobody can do anything to them. But in reality, they're a bunch of grumpy old nursing home rejects who can't even go one press conference without shitting themselves. I'm serious. These people are that freaking old. The average age of a person in Congress is 62 years of age. That is way too high. And to be quite blunt about it, we need to lower that age a little bit by getting rid of these old geezers. What do you think? By the way, Joe Biden marked himself safe from abandoning his laptop with pics of himself smoking crack and emails proving that his son let his father do a quid pro quo with Ukraine. Meanwhile, the Democrats were claiming that Trump was colluding with freaking Ukraine and Russia, but look what happened to them. Now they're just a satire of themselves. So meet the fuck-ups. You've got Nancy Pelosi, 
who loves to smell Jerry Nadler's shit. You got Barack Obama, a communist sellout monkey. You got Joe Biden, a man who can't even count to ten anymore because he's too damn old. You got Adam full of shit Schiff, someone who regularly eats shits and dies. You've got another dumbass in Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And then, of course, the biggest loser in the history of womanhood. Of course, I'm talking about Hillary Rodham Clinton. What do these people have in common? I don't know, except they're all screw-ups who intentionally compromised this country's election this year. Oh, by the way, scientists have proved that 2,904,000,000, 2,904,000,000, um, people on the earth did not bother to read the number that I just pointed out to you. That's not to say that they're lazy, it's just that they overlook a bunch of shit. Not that there's anything wrong with that, there's not. And apparently in this nation, it's okay to be stupid. It's socially acceptable to be stupid. It, quite frankly, is encouraged. And I'd love to think that Americans aren't the stupidest people on earth. But when you have 70 million people who are stupid and clueless enough to willingly try to elect a man with dementia who has been a known pedophile for decades you know that something is probably wrong. And you know what the funniest part about that is? Those same 70 million people, they are so brainwashed that they are practically beyond repair. Which reminds me, scientists have also proven that the majority of Americans who voted for Joe Biden are Democratic suck-ups who have no drive or motivation to do anything but want everything handed to them for free on a golden platter. These same Democratic voters are also stupid, infantile, refuse to concede when a Republican becomes elected to leave, pour detergent on their bodies to get free health care, won't believe that China colluded with Democrats to steal the last four election cycles between 2008 and 2020, despite irrefutable evidence pointing to such a fact think that Tide Pods are a delicatessen meant to be served in restaurants instead of being served in things meant to clean your dishes in a dishwasher and assume that George Soros is a philanthropist knowing all too well of his lifelong ambition to turn America into Nazi Germany since at least, at least, the 1970s. Pretty cool, huh? You didn't think I knew all that shit, did you? Of course I did, because I've been doing my research, because I know things, and I see things, and when I see things, I can't unsee them, and when I can't unsee them, you know what happens next. I talk about it. And when I talk about it, you, the people of YouTube, get to hear it right here on Skull Media Enterprises Channel 2, because I can't get into my old one now. It figures, doesn't it? It really does. And here's the thing. These same Democrats, some of them, when they get high, they think that the time of year is Obama and the time of day is Obama because Obama, because that's all they talk about. They talk about how a black man became president of America for eight years and created all this hope and change when in reality the only hope and change he's created was for his family's fat wallets which were fat enough already go figure right talk about corruption let me tell you something people corruption is going on under your noses under my nose as well every single freaking day and you know why because everything happens for a reason, and those that are willing to fall for it, 
will get nothing in return. By the way, I had to make a call real quick from my phone company. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I made a call to my phone company. Now, moving on, this is what our society has become. A bunch of suck-ups who depend on their parents... You know, I, I don't really depend on mine anymore because one of them's dead and the other one's living in an RV with my older cousin. But that's beside the point. The point is, there's a doctor that had to deal with a woman who had all these luxuries but couldn't afford to take care of herself. Check this out. He says, During my shift in the emergency room last night, I had the pleasure of evaluating a patient whose smile revealed an expensive shiny gold tooth whose body was adorned with a wide assortment of elaborate and costly tattoos, who wore a very expensive brand of tennis shoes, and who also chatted on a new cellular telephone equipped with a popular R&B ringtone. While glancing over her patient chart, I happened to notice that her payer status was listed as Medicaid. During my examination of her, the patient informed me that she smokes more than one costly pack of cigarettes every day and somehow still has money to buy pretzels and beer. And you in our Congress expect him to pay for this woman's health care? What, are you shitting me? He goes on to say, I contend that our nation's health care crisis is not the result of a shortage of quality hospitals, doctors, or nurses. Rather, it is the result of a crisis of culture, a culture in which it is perfectly acceptable to spend money on luxuries and vices while refusing to take care of oneself or, heaven forbid, persich health insurance. Is it... It is also a culture, excuse me, based on the irresponsible credo that I can do whatever I want because someone else will always take care of me and fuck America. Once the government fixes this culture crisis that rewards irresponsibility and dependency, the result of how quickly America's healthcare disabilities will disappear or rather difficulties would be shocking. I should also point out I should point out first and foremost why do people continue to ask me to fall for their Bitcoin and free money bullshit when they know I'm just gonna flat out say no? I had a conversation, a conversation with this guy named Anthony. This guy means well, his heart's in the right place, but he's in the wrong profession. Clearly in the wrong profession. Now, he said in my messenger conversation to him that he saw my name on Canib. He asked me if I heard of them, and I said no. I asked him what it stands for. And what they're about. He says that it's about Christmas and New Year's bonus. Randomly giving to selected people. To take care of kids, buy houses, pay rent, and maintain the standard of living for the festive season. Have you heard from them? I have not a heard or a single peep from them. So, I guess they chose me then? And this is me recreating the conversation. They compensate me 30,000 pounds when I apply for it. The money is free, which I won't have to pay it back. Did you get yours from them too? Hell no. Now here's where this really gets interesting. I wish there was such a thing as free money, though. I spelled thing wrong. I mean, if money's this easy to get, everyone in their families would be getting it. In fact, I didn't even apply. I think you should contact the claiming agent now to confirm if your name is still on the winner's list so that you too can claim yours. Do you know how to do that? Is there a fee involved? And he gives it away right there. Yes! 
then I'm sorry, but you're wasting my time. There's no such thing as free money if you have to pay a fee to get it. No, you're not going to pay anything to get it. I don't pay anything to get mine from them. I get it free without paying them. Except they spelled free without the R. He got the F and the E's right, but forgot to add an R in the word free. I get it fee without paying him. <laughs> what a moron. Not trying to be mean, but I prefer to earn my money by doing things like hauling mulch and getting a job at a Dollar General. How else did I manage to get $1,700 in eight months just by hauling mulch down the hill? I'm serious about the program. I don't pay anything to get mine. I know it, but I find it next to impossible to believe. There's another thing going on where you can win free money by playing games on a smartphone, but I'm too smart to fall for that either. I can't lie to you, it's real and legit! Well, I'm going to stop this right here for a moment before I continue, and say that if this is real and legit, why would you want to pay something to get free money? Why? Just why? Here's how I responded. Okay, get this. Sometimes, if you want to earn money, you've got to be willing to sweat, bleed, and even cry for it. That's why we have job fields like construction work, teaching, policing, science, and other lines of work. It's easy to get a job as a restaurant worker, too, so long as you've got a resume on file and a bit of experience on your side. Then he tries to link me to the Facebook page of some guy named Agent Johnson Smith Eric. He says, Click on the send messages box and send them text now to make sure that you're to claim you're winning money now, okay? Message them right now and let them know that a beneficiary asked you to contact them that you have not gotten your free winning money. Except it's not free, you have to pay a fee to fucking get it. That's what I'm trying to get through this guy's head. But he won't listen to that because he's clearly a Democrat. Okay, here's how I responded. I'll share a story with you. I was in a group home setting for 43 months, and after years of looking for employment, I landed my first paying job as a lobby cleaner at McDonald's. I got paid $8.25 hourly to mop and sweep, maintain clean tables and bathrooms and chairs, pick up tea barrels, and putting them over to the drink area. It was the greatest 12 months of my life up until my first brother-in-law tragically killed himself. This actually happened, by the way. That's when I realized I needed a change of location, so I left my job on the best of terms. And the manager I had at the time, Rocio, said I could keep my work uniform as a souvenir, and that was very nice of her, so I did. Oh, just try to message them right now, so you can claim your winning money from them also. So first you said there was a fee. Now you claim there's not. So is there a fee or not? You said you couldn't lie to me, didn't you? But he's going to assume that there's not a fee, even though he said right out the gate when I asked him if there was going to be a fee, that there was, in fact, a fee. But then he backpedals and says, and he continues to tell this lie. He says, no, I'm serious about this. Have you ever heard of Bernie Madoff? I responded. If you haven't, I can tell them, I can tell you about them. I can tell you about them. He responds, just message them right now so you can get your winning money from them. Did you know that Bernie Madoff was a guy who used tactics pretty similar to this and managed to con millions of people out of their money? He's now serving 150 years in the slammer for being the greatest conman and fraud in history. And he almost, almost got away with it. Almost got away with it. And at this point, he's still dead set on trying to get me to fall for his crap, but I'm, I'm just not falling for it. I'm sorry. I just don't believe that it's genuine. I don't believe that it's real. Now, the money that Ellen gives away on her show, you know, the Ellen DeGeneres show, that's real. This money is not real. It's real and legit. This program is for real. It's less than two months until New Year's. Do you think, don't you think that Canib would be doing this in December rather than November? Or could this be a year-long tradition? Besides, it's not even snowing yet. Then he sends me a picture of the money that he got. 
claiming that he got his money for free, but like I said before, I'm not falling for it because I know better. Clearly, I know better than to fall for this stuff. Facebook Messenger even warns me about things like this because at least I know what to do. You're damn right I'm going to capture it on my phone, screenshot style, and I'm going to upload it to YouTube for all the world to see because people need to be aware of this shit. This is real. It happens to people every day. People get scammed. And then he shows me another picture of the box of money that he claimed to get. And he said, That's my winning money package. I got them from them and isn't by force for you to claim the money. But I'm going to advise you not to lose up this great blessing and opportunity, okay? Do they ship to the United States, I asked him. And where do they get all this money from? It's got to come from somewhere. Now, you would think that the money comes from a Federal Reserve Bank or something, right? Or the U.S. Treasury, but the guy is clearly a British man. I should have been using a British accent this whole time, but I'm going to keep going because it's my video and I'll do what the fuck I want. Basically, what I'm saying is people are naive enough. I mean, if people are naive enough to fall for this bullshit on a daily basis, they're naive enough to vote a dementia-suffering pedophile into the White House. It's just that simple. He goes on to say, The money is free because of December. They're just doing December bonus. December's not coming for at least two weeks, Anthony, I tell him. To all Facebook people! So they're worldwide? I'm serious! <laughs> I then respond, That's what Barack Obama said when he promised to open change to America. Instead, what we got was eight years of a Muslim terrorist from Kenya treating the American presidency like a George Carlin comedy show from the early 2000s. Get that. I mean, it's just... I don't know, people lack common sense nowadays. They don't have any common sense. They don't have any common sense. They don't have any. They don't. Really, they don't. He then says to me, and I quote, You think I'm joking about this or what? This also happened to me. When my old friend told me about this, I was thinking, that is a scam, but later I messaged the free agent Johnson Smith Eric, who was charging the winning money, and the agent told me what to do, and I got that, and did that, and I got my winning money package. In exactly time, he gave, so I really saw your profile name on his winner's list, and I'm trying to tell you, don't want to hear me, isn't by force for you to claim the money, okay? And then I respond very simply, I'm just not convinced. Sorry about that. He gave me a thumbs up. I gave him a thumbs up. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're smart like me, you won't fall for this shit. You also won't fall for people like Joe Biden, who had a cancer charity that spent millions that they got from you, the taxpayers, on their salaries. But they didn't spend a damn penny on research. Not one damn dime. Not one goddamn dime. Not one dime. Not one dime. Not one dime. Oh, they, they got millions off the taxpayers, and they spent it on their salaries, but... They didn't spend any money on research, apparently, because they're Democrats, and they're above the fucking law! Yes, of course they fucking are. Considering they make the fucking laws. Figures, doesn't it? I mean, they're supposed to follow the laws that they make. They're supposed to lead by example. But apparently, somewhere along the way, Richard Nixon came along and said, Ah, well, the hell with that. I'm gonna open this country up for foreign trade. I don't have to follow any laws that I make and everybody else followed by example and every single Democrat since at least Nixon 
decided that they were going into business for themselves and sold out to the Chinese corruption machine. Do you get it now? Do you understand? I mean, it is really not that hard, ladies and gents. By the way, breaking exclusive analysis of election night data from all states shows, get this, this is from gatewaypundit.com, thegatewaypundit.com, the one and only gatewaypundit.com. Millions of votes, millions of votes either switched from President Trump to Biden or were lost using Dominion and other systems. This was published as an article at 6.12 p.m. on November 10th, a week after the freaking election was supposed to conclude by a Gateway Pundit writer named Joseph Hoft. This guy is legitimate. This guy is a legitimate independent journalist. He is the real deal. I implore you to check him out. You will not be sorry if you do. Because I am telling you now, as much as I'm alive, as much as I've got a cock and two balls, this guy is legitimate. You know what's not legitimate? Roy freaking Cooper, who North Carolina was stupid enough to elect him to a second term as governor, a second term that he clearly did not deserve, by the way. And if he deserved it, he would have been honest with us and told us, look, I screwed you guys over the first term. I'm going to make up for it in the second term. You let me, I'll do like JFK did, and I'll start doing things instead of pretending to do things. But no, Roy Cooper doesn't do that. He's a jackass that struts around like it's a king and talks gibberish. A turkey. If you put a turkey up against him in a debate, the turkey would win. But... Roy Cooper here would claim that he won and strut around like he was God or something. And the turkey would just sit back and say, Nah, man, I won. You lost. Get over it. Okay, so get this. According to Real America's Voice, Editor-in-Chief from Just the News, John Solomon. This is a credible source. This is the kind of sources, these are the kinds of sources that the media will never tell you about because they are that corrupt. John Solomon, editor-in-chief of Just the News, says, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, sent at least $350 million to election judges in predominantly Democratic areas. Are you fucking kidding me? Is that not the most Democrat thing you've ever seen? Is that not most is that not the most un-American thing you've ever seen? Now <laughs> This is just the tip of the iceberg first of all, because this is this is just the beginning. Not to mention what Joe Biden did, not to mention what Barack Obama did, not to mention what Nancy Pelosi did, not to mention what Jerry Nadler did a couple months ago by shitting himself in front of a camera in front of a live global audience on C-SPAN fucking 3. Go figure. This source comes from One America News. This story is about a Trump attorney named Sidney Powell who says that the election results are getting ready to overturn. I'm going to read this article to you people, and you will read along with me in your head. You can't do it out loud. Just read along with me in your head. Don't say anything. Just hear me out. On an article updated 10.25 a.m. Monday, November 16th, a member of the president's legal team reaffirmed the fight to defend free and fair elections is not over. Attorney Sidney Powell, during an interview conclude that was conducted on Sunday, she said that election results in multiple states 
are getting ready to overturn. She cited an overwhelming amount of evidence the president's legal team has received concerning voter fraud and irregularities. Powell went on to claim that she has enough evidence, more than enough, some even dating back to 2016, to, loss, to launch a widespread criminal, criminal investigation. I tried, to, I tried to combine the words criminal and comical together. That didn't work. But anyway... She specifically noted a member of Joe Biden's team is also on the board of directors for a software company behind the flawed and rigged Dominion voting systems, which are also defective, by the way. The Dominion voting systems are as defective as the Durette Sky's dad's pool table that wouldn't work. You remember, you remember that clip where... Tourette's guy's dad, Daniel Walters Sr., said that this table's defective. Go check it out. Tourette's guy is love. Tourette's guy is life. You can't get enough Tourette's guy in your life. I tell you, you just cannot get enough Tourette's guy in your life. Anyway, back on topic. Let's continue with this story. Powell said the software dubbed Smartmatic, as in smartass, was designed for the sole purpose of shifting voter results from Republican to Democrat. She says and explains that it was a feature of the system that was designed with a back door so that people could watch in real time and calculate with an algorithm of how many votes they needed to change to make the results they wanted to create. Over the weekend, the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, brought attention to the company's alleged involvement while noting that the evidence will all come out. By the way, the guy that runs Dominion, this is the same guy. You know what he said? He said, don't worry, Trump's not going to win. Meanwhile, he's already won. Dominion has denied any claims its software was compromised, also adding that the election was the most secure in American history, more like the most insecure in American history. Meanwhile, Sidney Powell, Trump's attorney, hopes to reveal all pertaining affidavits and evidence of fraud before the election certification deadline. Now, if you're reading this and you still think that China isn't colluding with Joe Biden? You're a fucking idiot. Ha 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 ha. You fucking idiot. Just saying. I mean, there's ignorance and then there's deliberate willful ignorance. Which side are you on? Do you want to be ignorant, or are you just ignorant because you can't help it? I mean, the evidence is right fucking there. Which is also why, when the government asks that you don't need a gun, chances are, you're gonna need a freaking gun! I'm just saying, that's just my way of explaining things, my George Orwell way of explaining things to you, because you people need to know this, because I already know, and I'm just sharing this information with you. Meanwhile, thank you all very much for watching. I am very appreciative of your 35 minutes with me, and I thank you all. Thank you, and good night. Okay, guys, good night, y'all. Until next time, take care. This is a Skull Media production.